hosts, Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Park, You're up. Brian Freeman. All right, everyone, welcome to Studio Kitchen Colorado. I'm Greg Hollenbeck, and I just had a voice change operation. You know how that thing goes. At least, uh, at least the only thing I'm having changing. No, I'm Ross. <laughs> and gosh, it's oh, I've been invited to the Modern Eater Show by Greg, my still Khao colleague, but yeah. just we don't work together at the same time anymore. That's right. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. You are, uh, so Greg Holland back here, Ross Kaminsky, Brian Freeman, Jay Parker, Dave Avery, Little Rich Snyder, all's well in the world on this uh, beautiful <laughs> June 1st. Here we are. We made it. It's June. Uh, Ross, thank you for coming. Wouldn't miss it. Uh, uh, I've been trying to get here for a while. It's just, life's busy. I brought my son because he's a there. foodie. We got a full show. This is your first time experiencing a uh, show in the kitchen. Yes. Right? So you're so great at describing things and we also are if you don't want if you don't like ross's description you can go over to facebook <laughs> right. and watch the facebook live yeah, exactly but just describe what, the, the feeling in this room what you're seeing so the, the feeling is it's a buzz you know the feeling is a bunch of people who are happy to be in a place but i think what's different about this there are other places you can go where people be happy but you're adding all these other senses because, you know, behind you I see a couple different kinds of sausages grilling. And over there I see some elk that's ready to go on the grill. And, and spices and all. And the other thing, oh, this is the other thing I wanted to make sure to mention. What impresses me all the time, I mean, I've visited you here before, but never when you're cooking. Sure. But just to see how much incredible stuff, food, there is that is from Colorado. Yeah. I think most people don't realize that. And that's, and you're showcasing the huge amount of stuff here from Colorado, which is great. And Colorado chefs. And, yeah. Colorado small businesses. Yep. Um, Colorado booze. I'm drinking and, some yep. right now. Oh. Is that the uh, Laws or this the is, Bear Creek? It's the Bear Creek bourbon. It's the Bear Creek. I think that was a special edition that... Um, there it is. Yeah, they said it's a special barrel that only they have um, at the restaurant. So, Ross, I'm so glad you're here. I want to run some stuff by you. Myself, Brian, and Jay. June 15th. We head out. Last year we did this. This is our second annual. We head out on a nine-day road trip throughout wow. Colorado to source products. So we're going to do I, I got the goose, got the goose just ones. thinking about it. Yeah. So we go and we do a big circle. So through Colorado Springs, we leave on Saturday. So Saturday the 15th. Then, then we go into... Give them a little flavor first day. Where are we going to be? We're going to be in Colorado Springs. And At Corner Post Meats? Corner Post first, Meats. First night? Yep, absolutely. So these are what, what, we're, what we're doing with this loop in Colorado is basically sourcing a lot of great products, a lot of great people, getting a lot of great content and stories. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what we do. We're storytellers and right. content creators. Giving a voice to the agriculture in Colorado, to the ranchers in Colorado, yeah. to the breweries, to the distilleries, just people that are making our great products products here in Colorado, mm -hmm. sourcing these products, and then when we're back nine days later, come June 2nd, every Tuesday night for eight weeks, it goes until August 20th, we do a dinner series with all of those great products with wow. chefs every single week. So we're ramping up into a really busy time of year. Yeah, that, well, I remember last year, uh, last July, I saw you broadcasting outdoors. I was walking around with my family yeah. at the Cherry Creek Art Festival. Remember is that, that? Is that the show? Oh, that, that's oh, right. Okay. Yes, that, we were you, were at, out, uh, you were Grind Kitchen. We were in front <laughs> of Grind <laughs> for Cherry Creek Arts Festival. Yeah. That was almost a year ago, Ross. Yeah, and that's coming up again. I don't know if you guys will be there again, but that's in a month or two or with, something. With, uh, middle of July. Keegan Gerhard was down there for yeah. Networks, Keegan Gerhard and Deep. You never know where you're going to find Greg Holland back. I mean, listen, <laughs> it, what, what's so great about this show, The Modern mm. Eater, and, and you can testify to this is that it was an interesting proposition doing a Saturday food show in the in the K-House studio and having a chef come in and prop something up in the corner, yeah. maybe a Bunsen burner, and <laughs> you did. But it, as this show has evolved, Ross, what you will see in here is people are making business deals right now around us. Mm -hmm. uh, our sponsors who are welcome to come into the studio anytime they want to, we vetted these sponsors out to be some of the best of the best. Come in, network, see what the commonalities are. Just build a relationship. When opportunity comes along, you may have business. 
and we never anticipated that type of thing with the Modern Eater show. And I think that the networking is what we're really building our success on right now. I, I've already experienced it, I mean, this evening, right? I'm, and I'm not in the food business, right. right? But I was talking with John from Gluten Free Things, sure. who you and I both know well, yeah. and he listens to both of our shows, and he's here this evening. Yeah. And he's introducing me to bunch of people but like you know he's in this business organic produce sure. business and and so I'm experiencing all that myself and I think you know again you you do this in your world but I think one of my greatest satisfactions in in business is connecting people to benefit them even when there's nothing in it for me except just kind of the psychic benefit that's all I that's all I need I was going to ask you though Ross because you're a really smart guy with finances and and money is there a way that we can monetize networking around us? Can we get a little piece of everybody's action? Is, is that you can't do? It. No, you no, can't. You can't. No, but it does come back to you, and I don't mean like it does. karma, right? But yeah. in, in a way, sure. But you get a reputation as a guy where there's value added working with you, and yeah. then they want to come be a sponsor of the show or something because oh, right. they know other good things will happen in addition to the direct. Benefit. Well, it's turned into an incubator, yeah. and that's what the cool thing is, is because you know when you come to the show, you better have your game on Yeah. because there's other people in your industry that you want to meet first off, and then secondly, you want to do business with a lot of them. Yeah. So that's what's so cool about this One place. One of the things that I've noticed, though, Greg, with you, and this is exactly the same way with me, you and I are both really careful about who we work with as sponsors Absolutely. because reputation is everything. And, and, and you get a bad reputation in the, in the food business, yeah. you're sunk. You get a bad reputation kind of my side of the radio business, you're sunk. Absolutely. So one of the things I know whenever, like, you let me taste food or drink or yeah. whatever, it's going to be good. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. And there's a great story behind it. Yeah. Uh, with, you do know is, everybody's story. You get really involved with your... I with, think it's important. We kind of have an obligation as broadcasters, all of us, that um, we have a voice. We have a microphone. Mm -hmm. Many, really nobody has that type of microphone to be able to tell their stories. I believe it's an obligation for what we do to bring the best out of people. And just, and, and within politics, which you do all the time, is just to have the conversation. Yeah. Um, really. Uh, uh, K well, How runs a, a, a promo about the original social media, talk radio truly believe it yeah i mean truly truly as a kid that's what i wanted to do my ear to the ground and know what's going on in denver you listen to talk radio which is a, a really cool thing as you're here in this kitchen i want you to take a spin around there move john Irvin out of the way because i want you to get hey john move out of the way just a little bit uh give us the lineup for tonight ross Okay, the lineup, there's this guy named Ross. I think he's almost done. J.T. Eberly from Pasture Provisions. We see some of his... Some he of brought his, the pork chops. He brought the pork chops, yeah. They look very delicious. Uh, let's see. Chef Adam and Jeff from Hearth and Dram, they were... In, well, they weren't introduced on the radio yet. They were just introduced to the room. So Adam Vero and Jeff Hickman from Hearth and Dram. Mike Baker and Julia Matten from Water for People. Paul Dominguez and Sherry Cree from Infinite Harvest. You're really putting me to test because I've never read I know any have. of this You're before. A pro. Harry Smith from Black Sky Brewery and Steve Kurowski from Law's Whiskey House. I saw him walk in before with another very beautiful bottle of brown liquid that I'm going to have to try in addition to this bourbon that I got right here. I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you a secret that's part of the algorithm is you see so many people on the lineup. That's pretty quick hitting, right? Yeah. I mean, that's re not real long form. We can, I don't know, what can we spend, about 10 minutes? Yeah, 10, 15 folks. minutes. But part of that algorithm is the more people that are involved, the more powerful a broadcast is going to be. And that well, and it keeps it fun. Leads into their yeah, spheres. It definitely keeps it fun. I just I love the buzz, and I should have mentioned before because you asked me to, to describe. But when you walk in, you you feel like you're in a place that is where people who know what they're doing are are working, and it, it's a totally different vibe from doing a show in the K House Studio. Yeah. As much as you and I might like the K House Studio, I mean, this has the you know it is a professional. It doesn't just feel like a yeah. professional kitchen. It is a professional kitchen, yeah. and. It's like a true tell. studio kitchen, like though, don't is. you think? Yeah. Isn't yeah, that for cool? Sure. It's like, I mean, you've got oh this gosh, space in that. here for people to mingle. Yeah. And then you've got the kitchen that's wide open to everyone. I love it. Yeah. You ask you shall receive uh, the uh, pork chops wow. from Pasture Provisions. There it is right in front of you. We're going to take a break and taste that because that's what we have to do. I want you to stick around just a little bit longer and see kind of, will you do that? I know you're oh, going to be in the kitchen We're going to stick around for a long time. Okay. Will you be on the headset, though? 
Whatever you want me to do. Oh, that's fantastic. It's your show. Ross you Kaminsky with time. us. <laughs> I mean, I'd say you're working, but, I mean, how much of this is really work? No, none right. of it. This, this is uh, I'm out with my kid, hanging out with my friend. Yeah, yeah Ross doesn't <laughs> drink on his show, man. Come on now. I did once. <laughs> <laughs> the dream come true. But if you were to switch hats and you were to put on a hat, say you're now a beer rep. Yeah. Where would you rather be on a Saturday night to cultivate oh. leaves? Yeah, n- nowhere. It's great. Yeah. This is where you'd like and, to and, be. And, I, again, that it's really important. I mean, it's one thing to introduce people, like, at a... At a convention or at a meeting. It's another thing to introduce people in a place where everyone's already having a good oh, time. Absolutely. And it, it's, it's better. <laughs> they, call that, they call that the soft sell. Yeah, there you the go. The very easy one. <laughs> All right, let's take that break. We're at Studio Kitchen, Colorado. It's a great night. Ross Kaminsky's here with myself and Brian Freeman. Of course, Jay Parker doing all the hard work and Dave Avery um, doing all the audio, which it just sounds fantastic. Uh, this is something you didn't know, but we have a show behind the show because when we break off to Facebook, our Facebook listeners don't have to listen to those national spots on KHOW, right? Mm-hmm. They get to hear Little Rich in the corner doing another interview. So yeah. now I'm going to send it mm-hmm. off. We'll break away from KHOW right here from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, and we'll be back in a flash, and we're going to send it over to Little Rich right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Thanks, Greg. What an opening segment. What a crowd. Holy cow. Let's hear it. Let's hear it in here. Man, there is a lot of stuff going on in here. Welcome, Facebook family. And speaking of family, we've got someone that returned to the flock. John Urban, Gluten-Free Things. Welcome home, brother. Well, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Oh, it's so good to have you back in. You were here at the very beginning. Very yeah, beginning. yeah, yeah. I saw the infancy, you know, back before this was even here and stuff like that. So I'm excited to be back, be the gluten-free things for the Modern Eater Show and all that kind of good stuff. And well, thanks for so supporting us you guys, and oh, all of you. Well, you guys are a great group of people and always have a lot of fun being here. So what's coming up? What's, what's new? What do we have to look forward to this summer? Well, this summer we're actually going to be on the Chef Series for this summer, the eight different, yeah. So what we're going to be doing is there's going to be a gluten-free item on each of the eight chefs. Eight and different dinners. Yeah, so we're going to have breads and cookies and all that kind of good stuff. And then uh, we're just working on a lot of new products. Uh, Bruce Shees is working on a gluten-free tiramisu. That would be awesome. awesome. Yeah. Thank you, John. we got to throw it over to our sponsors. Listen, these are the people that have stepped up to make it better. We'll be right back. Thank you. It's a distillery. It's a place to hang. It's about quality. It's about taste. It's about passion. Infused with American spirit. Rocker whiskey, rocker rum, rocker vodka. Get ready for an original look, feel, and experience. Old Town Littleton. And if you get hungry while you're sipping on some drinks, they've got the best food truck line in town. Open Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Rockerspirits.com. Rockerspirits.com. Hi, I'm Andrew Moore, brewmaster at the Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project. At Intrepid Sojourner, beer tells a story inspired by my adventures as a well-traveled archaeologist. My recipes draw inspiration from all over the world, from historical styles like satis, grazers, and kvass, to adjunct beers inspired by flavors from international cuisines. My beers broaden the horizons of what beer can be. Explore basil IPA and Turkish coffee stout. Enjoy chai brown ale. Taste lavender tripel and the distinctive horchata milk stout. Thoughtfully source spices and herbs, enhance flavors inherent to indigenous beer styles. My sincere hope is that Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project will inspire adventure and wanderlust. Come visit the tap room and share your tales with friends and plan your next sojourn. Located at 925 West 8th Avenue in the heart of the Arts District on Santa Fe. For everything Intrepid, Look us up online at SojournerBeers.com, and remember to drink globally, locally. Hey, it's Greg Holland back for Gluten-Free Things. Are you intolerant or sensitive to gluten? Or maybe you're a gluten-free lifestyler? Is your menu limited because you've eliminated gluten from your diet? Are you missing the taste of foods that traditionally contain gluten? What if I told you that you can add breads, pizzas, muffins, cakes, cookies, waffles, croissants, English muffins, the list goes on right back to your menu. Gluten-Free Things is a local gluten-free and vegan bakery that reintroduces you to the foods you love. Owner John Irvin believes gluten-free shouldn't taste like the box that it's packaged in. Trust me when I tell you the products from his bakery in Arvada are fresh, flavorful, and masterly crafted, leaving you with a product that tastes like the real thing. Simply delicious. The bakery is local. One minute. Fourth and Sims across the street from Arvada West High School. Check out their website at glutenfreethings.com 
You'll be amazed with the variety of gluten-free products they make. And chefs, don't leave your gluten-free restaurant guests without options. Contact John at info at glutenfreethings.com. That's info at glutenfreethings.com to see what he can do for you. Give him a shot. 11651 West 64th Avenue in Arvada. It's gluten-free things. Hey, you guys. Jay Parker here for Encore Energy. How much are you paying for your natural gas? Wouldn't you like to save 10 to 20% on your natural gas bill? Of course you would. You're not crazy. Encore Energy and Brian Rizzuto can do just that. Save you money. Give Brian a call. 720-245-5771. Maybe you own a restaurant or a brewery and use a ton of natural gas. This is how you save money. Get a free savings review from Brian Rizzuto and Encore energy call brian at 720-245-5771 save 10 to 20 percent on your natural gas bill right now yo yo what's up <laughs> this is justin brunson culture meat and cheese in denver central market i'm a meat guy <laughs> and you're listening to the modern eater show on iHeartRadio. all right bring us back brian we are back at studio kitchen colorado here on iHeartRadio k house 630 Right in the Rocky Mountain region. We're ready for the second little segment here. Yeah. Tonight it's JT Eberly from Pastures Provisions. I just tasted one of the most tasty pork chops. What did you think about that, Greg? Delicious. Well, uh, so thank you very much, JT, for coming back you're, to the show. You're very welcome. Glad uh, to be back. Roth continues with us, Studio Kitchen Colorado, live on Facebook. And uh, we're just going to get real geeky, hyper local. And I love what you guys do at Pasture Provisions. Um, so first of all, JT, tell, tell everybody what you do. Yeah, Pasture Provisions is one of the only uh, farm-to-table delivery services that focuses all on Colorado meats. So we do pasture-raised pork and chicken and grass-fed beef and lamb, work with all these great small farms across the state, and bring that right to your door, kind of like the milkman, but we're the meat man. So here's how you so you asked me how what I thought of the pork chop. Yeah, what'd you think? Did, did you have some of the pork chop? Y- yeah, I did. Is and there Jasper one, had two. Is there one thing that struck you about the pork chop? Tenderness. Tenderness, okay. Um, generally, unless it's great pork, right? I won't eat it medium like that. Yeah, it's unusual for pork to be cooked that way. Talk about that. Yeah, and uh, one of the things we work with a farm called uh, Colorado Pasture Pork out of Hotchkiss, Colorado. Toby McPartland is the rancher there. Toby, Toby, he, Toby is just doing <laughs> amazing stuff. We've Toby. been there. We've seen yeah, it. You've seen it. You've been there. So uh, yeah, I think he'll be out there June twenty fourth yeah. or something. But. He's just doing it right. You know, he's raising these pigs out free ranging on 40 acres right along the North Fork of the Gunnison River, rooting up vegetables he plants for them, eating mushrooms, doing whatever pigs do best. Happiest pigs you ever saw. So, um, you know, when you're doing it with that quality, he's got a nice heritage breed, great marbling of the meat. You can cook it this way because it's been handled properly. It's been processed at a small scale processor. One pig in, one pig out, and you're just going to get really high quality product that, you know, you can cook it the way you should cook pork, which is medium. So, so, so. Can, you, can you elaborate for a second yeah. on heritage breed? I understood yeah. everything else. I mean, I know what that means yeah. kind of, but yeah. what, does this, what does that mean to someone in the business? And I'm not an expert at all. Would it be it? like an heirloom? Yeah, like an heirloom for, for an animal. So these are uh, breeds of pigs that have not been genetically crossed or necessarily bred to meet commercial standards. So kind of true to their original DNA. Uh, they do crossbreed some of them to, to bring out different characteristics. Magdalistas are a fattier pig. Uh, but when you crossbreed that with someone else, you're going to get uh, maybe more marble or more meat through the belly section and things like that. So there's a lot of things that can be done with it, but it still kind of holds that heritage breed. And it, it's just a, a richer, darker pork. You know, it, it used to be the other white meat. I call it the other red meat now because these pork chops have a nice red hue to them when you're sitting there out raw on your counter. So well, we, uh, we can officially start partying now yeah. uh, <laughs> Biker Gym. From yes. Biker Jim's Gourmet Hot Dogs is in the house. Love it. So <laughs> just need to make that, that an announcement. So, Ross, let us pay, paint a picture for you. And, Jay, hop on the microphone for this. But when we visited Toby, and you're right, just right along the river, he's out there throwing the, the uh, stick in the river for the dog. The yep. dog's running out. Pigs are behind him. So the, <laughs> the pigs, what he, he practices organic, right? Is he certified organic? He's not certified, but, but he's he doing it right. Organic. Yeah, he's doing it He's got way. a few pastures. I think he keeps it about 100 pigs, right? Yep. When we saw him, he wants to grow, but he's got about 100 pigs. Continually rotating these pastures so the pigs are just in the 
opti- Jay, you would live in those pastures, right? You actually got in there with the pigs. Yeah, I got bit by a pig. Yeah, I, I just I was glad he brought that up. That yeah, could- one of those guys bit me. I'm pretty sure he got his by now. Yeah, <laughs> and it was okay. He might be this pork chop right here. It could be. I, I hope brought so. him special That's for That's the special so. flavor in yeah, this pork chop, yeah. actually. Yeah, I'm going to see how far I can kick that one outside. <laughs> it, it's interesting because when you go there, you just say, um, I'm so glad I visited this because now I know where this food is coming from. So what a pleasure to know Toby's product right here, Toby McPartland. Uh, He's he's great. And when we visited him about a year ago, he was – pretty well he was not very well heard of at all no he not a lot of people knew about toby at all he was talking about the fact that he wanted to grow but he just didn't have a, a market for his help, hogs yeah. I, i'm loving that you guys are helping him jt that, that's what we did with our business is help get those farmers from the western slope and get their product out here in the hands of the folks in the front range here so toby was our guy out of the gate and will continue to be and uh you know hopefully we'll be buying all those pigs here soon so here's where it all wow. is, here's where it all makes sense and circles back around and i don't know if this is true jt jt eberly um here with us so you're in a kitchen like this and we go and do our road trips and we source a lot of great product partnerships with ranches right for you you've got to find some of the best of the best oh, uh, using the modern eater show as, a, as an aggregate for sourcing that may be helpful to you as well right yeah absolutely uh, we had the parkers on here a few months ago when we were on the show and uh, toby you know we're very loyal to them um, but we do get products from other folks and they're just following those same standards for us and it's uh they're out there uh but you know they're hard to find they're not name brand you don't see them in your grocery store you see them at the farmer's market uh or hopefully through outlets like us where you know we're bringing this to the folks so i light a far- highlight a ranch and um just get, tell us a story tell us about something that means something to you that you work with personally yeah uh, well we had bill and kelly parker out here last time it's just you know a, a family organization here that that works as a unit their daughter Chloe's raising the, the lambs. Their sons are helping Bill with the the, the steer. JT, and what's the name a, of their what's the name of their uh, ranch? Par- Parker Pastures. Parker Pastures. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and his wife is doing it all. So she's homeschooling those kids, and they're just they're just doing things the right way and and doing that holistic land management. They actually measure the quality of their land over four years has improved. The biodiversity, the health of the soil, and, and you can see that in the health of the animals. So they're giving back to the land. They're not taken from the land the way they ranch. Toby's the same way. Rotate those pastures. Make sure that you're not degrading the land that those animals live on, and you're making it a better place than it was without them on it. So does that mean oh. anything to you, Ross? That type of stuff, or are you fine with Hormel and not know? You know those types of. I mean, you, you know I learned is? so much from this show. I'll have to say the the more I learn about it, the more important it it becomes. I I, I think if you're not a particularly educated consumer or you don't listen to the show. Mm-hmm things like that, then maybe you're okay with Hormel until you l- start learning what else is out there and not just taste that it's better, but understand why it's better. Right. Then I think it's very hard to go back to supermarket brand or whatever. And, and when you taste this, I mean, you're not going to get a pork chop that tastes like that. No. You're, you're, you're just going to the store, the yeah. store, you know? So, so, Ross, you may be thinking, great, I love the story, but how do I get any of these products? Yeah, I am actually thinking that. <laughs> you weren't just putting words in my mouth. I am actually thinking that. <laughs> yeah, so pastureprovisionsco.com. So we have basket sizes for any, any family size in need. We deliver every two or every four weeks right to your door. So these beautiful pork chops as well as our grass-fed beef lamb and pasture-raised chicken. We do eggs and veggies as well with that. So, um Kind of like grocery delivery, but hyper local because everything's coming from the state of Colorado. So we're we're sticking to the Colorado proud, and there's just so much great product here. And I found a new one today. Isn't Ro- that cool? Infinite Harvest. Yes. So yeah. Ross Web- has a website. Freezer. One more time. Uh, PastureProvisionsCo.com. You have a freezer, Ross. I know these. Things. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you made me get a get a freezer because you had me buy a quarter of a cow. I didn't have you. I yeah, I loved it. To. Oh, I loved and, it, and it was good. And oh, it was, another local. It was beyond good. Purveyor of beef yeah. with it was um, Prosper Meats. I think that's yeah. who it was. Um, I love what you do. This all comes full circle again when we take off on this road trip, and you're introducing us to a couple of new farms in. Uh, is it Westcliff? Yeah, Westcliff. You'll meet with uh, Elin at Songgrace Best. She's just a cowgirl at heart. She'll probably meet you on her horse, go wrangle a cow or two, and uh, that'll be fun. And then Joe from uh, Amish Acres. So that's where we get our eggs, and he's doing pasture-raised eggs. And 
uh, just doing amazing things in the winter. He literally sprouts barley, grows it to about three inches tall, and throws it out to the chickens so they have grass, you know, year-round that they're munching on and golden yolks all year. And it's just it's fun when you get to meet people that are so passionate about it. So, and isn't it amazing when you eat something fresh like that, JT? Oh, yeah. It's just yeah. there's nothing like it. Keeping it local, keeping it real. JT, Pastor Provisions, it's yeah. so awesome. And one week from today, we'll be releasing our Summer Dinner Series Chefs. And uh, eight weeks in a row in the summertime, and here's another great partner of us uh, that we will provide. Thank you so much. You'll see more of you at the Summer Dinner Series, more of these great products, and these are the stories we want to say. Pastor Provisions, look at that. Appreciate you having me on. All right, great. We're going to take a break. It's 630 on 630 KHOW, an iHeartRadio station, our flagship station. But check us out on Facebook Live, Brian. What do you think? I think you should check it out. But stay tuned right now because you get to see Rich and Ross yep. right now live on Facebook. Let's break away from the kitchen right now. And uh, another thing, if you have a question for anybody here, you can uh, shoot us a phone call at 303-713-8255. All right, we'll take a break from the kitchen. We'll be right back. It is the Modern Eater Show on iHeart. Thank you, Greg. Look who I've got. I've got somebody really like famous here. Where? Ross. This guy. <laughs> Right there. Oh, jeez. from KHOW Morning Radio. <laughs> Welcome, Ross. Oh, it's so great to be here. Oh, this is fantastic. You know what? One thing for sure, you're not going to go to sleep here. That's <laughs> for damn it's just a buzz. Everyone's so happy to be here, including me. And I brought my son, who's over there on the headphones right now. He's got the headphones on. <laughs> Truly, this is for family. We've got young ones, old ones. I'm going to the oldest thing in here. <laughs> oh, please. Come back again. What did you learn while you were up on the table? I learned the incredible quality of... Of, of food, meat, uh, produce, everything that you can source right here in Colorado. And I learned more, I think it, it must be growing because I'm hearing more and more about it, partly from Greg, but just to be able to get this quality of food locally, I think is uh, tremendous. It, it, it's true. Why, why do you have to go clear across the country when we've got it in our own backyard, helping our neighbors, our communities, our families? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Down. Yeah. I mean, talk about putting <laughs> a, a, a nice dress on a pig. And you come down. Thank you, brother. Hey, we're going to take a break. Listen to some words from some of our best sponsors. They've stepped up to help you. We'll be right back. Probably heard the excitement. This year, we are creating a stir in the culinary community. This is your personal invitation to join us on our constant culinary adventure. Let us open up our network to you and help you grow professionally. Whether you are a chef, purveyor, brewer, baker, we are here to build your brand, your business, and connect you with Colorado's culinary community. Join us. I'd hey, love to hear from you. Email me, agent. Colleen, at acfcoloradochefs.org. Hey, chef friends. It's Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas. Rockalitas, okay. known for hyper-local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you, too, want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant-tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper-local, Colorado-grown, Cold pressed in Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Hey, pizza lovers. It's your pizza guy here, Jason McGovern, with Crush Pizza and Tap right here in Denver, Colorado. With your help, let's make pizza great again. Come into Crush Pizza and Tap for our award-winning pizza, wings, and local beer. But we're serving up three styles of pizza for you to crush. Dig into our Chicago deep dish with sauce on top of the cornmeal crust. And don't forget about our Sicilian, that's right, with cheesy crisp edges and that soft, soft crust. Don't forget about America's pizza. How could you do that? Crush Pizza and Taps hand-tossed pizza will take your taste buds back One minute. back to that neighborhood pizzeria you loved as a kid. You like deals? Come in and mention the Modern Eater and get a buy one, get one free on our hand-tossed pizzas any day of the week. Man, that's good. Lastly, don't forget to crush our award-winning smoked wings. They're Little Rich approved and loved by everyone. Crush Pizza and Taps conveniently located at 1200 West 38th Avenue, just minutes from downtown. Come and crush pizza with us. We've been making pizza great again since 2012. It's Crush Pizza and Tap. 
Want to bake the best? Bake with the best. Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas and the Modern Eater. Our wraps fold cold and don't break open, yet they're soft and delicious. What's my secret? Ardent Mills. Organic, ancient, and heirloom grains like quinoa, spelt, and more. Locally headquartered in Denver, Colorado, Ardent Mills provides the industry's broadest range of traditional and organic flowers, whole grains, customized blends, and specialty like products dedicated to providing the culinary industry with the next grains and unique plant-based ingredients. I love Ardent Mills, and I know you will too. To bake the best, you must use the best. Learn more at ardentmills.com. Hey, this is Brother Luck from Colorado Springs. All right, you ready? <laughs> Owner of Four by Brother Luck and Lucky Dumpling. I mean, he's, he's a very, very impressive man. And you're rocking with the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Okay, here we go. Back from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, live on uh, 630 KHOW and on Facebook Live. Check out our Facebook Live. We are um, continuing, and this is a real treat because Hearth and Dram is in the house. And uh, Chef Adam, Chef Adam Vero, man, thanks for coming. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us. It's awesome. Gosh, you, uh, I want you to do this it's introduction. A, it's, a, it's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, but it's, it's definitely fun. <laughs> <laughs> At least put you to work on a Saturday uh, night. Usually we have other people do most of this stuff. So uh, Ross, continue, uh, Ross Kaminsky continues with us, and, of course, myself, Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman, Jay Parker, and, and uh, Dave Avery with Little Rich Schneider. It's a full house here on uh, June 1st. But the Hearth and Dram, I, I mean, cheese, man. I love the restaurant, first Thank of you. all. And then you said uh, you're Sue, who I want you to introduce because um, you've had so many great words to say with him, and you guys, I guess, are inseparable. So make the introduction. <laughs> uh, so Jeff Hickman is my uh, chef de cuisine. So Jeff and I were Sorry to the demote you, Chef. No, that's, that's fine. fine. <laughs> he does that to himself sometimes. But uh, <laughs> after you accept salary, it's your fault. Yeah. That's right. So uh, you know, Jeff and I worked there for quite a while. We worked at uh, for Tag Restaurant Group for uh, about five, six years, respectively. Um, and uh, I took over Hearth and Dram a little over a year ago. And when the opportunity came up to bring someone on, Jeff was obviously the right person. And it's been uh, really great. You know, we do pretty much spend all of our time together, whether it's at work or not. Uh, we, we joke that we're uh, heterosexual life mates. And... That's me and Jay. Pretty inseparable. Me and Jay so. are like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really obnoxious, actually. Like, we, we did the uh, tag 10 year reunion uh, a couple of weeks ago. Troy invited us to come back as alumni. And we, a bunch of friends were like, What is it with you two? Do you guys do everything together? And we're like, Not everything, but pretty close. <laughs> pretty you much. Know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Ross, have you uh, had any kind of uh, dinner or anything at Hearth and Dram yet? No, but I clearly need to. Yeah. 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 You do. It well, is. It's, it's crazy, Greg. These guys get mad respect in town here. Yeah. Adam, I'll tell you, you were on the Facebook Live at Growers the other day. I had so many of my friends reach out and be like, Listen, Adam is a stud. Wait until he comes That's on the show. Really awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Good so enough. huge props. Thank have to ask much. the question before we go forward. What was Troy like to work for? Troy's awesome. Yeah, we love Troy. Um, obviously, uh, he was not the easiest person to work for at all times, but just because he wants everything to be perfect. You know, his name's on the front door at the end of the day. That's really like, you know, we, what he, if, he want, if he wants something, we have to do it. It's a chef's um, prerogative. Like, yeah. like, it's his restaurant. It's his money. It's his name. It's his reputation. And we learned early on how to anticipate what he was going to want and kind of we lasted at tag a lot longer than a lot of people and we're still great friends with troy we were hanging out the other night yeah. had a had a beverage and here's the litmus test when you move on when you go to your next gig right he's supportive yeah absolutely. absolutely i think the uh the conversation that troy and i had was uh when i was leaving i was basically like man you know six years I, was, I almost quit about a hundred times he's like yeah i almost fired you about a hundred times so <laughs> he's like, but we were both looked at each other and we're like really glad that we didn't like yeah. really glad that we went the way that we did you know like jeff said we are still friends with him we talk to him not on a regular basis but we definitely talk to him on occasion we you know we hang out here and there so uh we definitely do have a good relationship with him which is great for us so what do you think you um what do you think you do that you wouldn't do if you never worked with him or or don't do that you would do if you worked I for feel him like kind of everything a little bit like everything one of, one yeah of the, it was such a demanding, um, high expectation kitchen. Like when I when I first started, Adam was training me, and he was it was little things like, ten more seconds in the pan with your scallop, and I'm like, get out of here, man! Like you're, <laughs> you're dogging me out. And he's like, no, man, I'm I'm helping you. This is how we do it, and that's um, just everything, M meticulousness, you know, attention to detail, picking trash up off the floor, you know, keeping your station clean and organized, making sure everything's full and ready to go. Like it's really kind of a lot about how we work. I think I thought I was a pretty good chef when I started there. Yeah, and. I was not as good as I am now, you know, and Agreed. a lot of that came from not only Troy, but the caliber of chefs that he hired, you know. Yeah, Jeff, don't you think you come to appreciate that more after you've been doing it for a few years? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Like, we've got a young kid, he's 23, and I'm like, hey, man, you know, I know you feel like we're, we're messing with you all the time, but we're not. If I didn't care about you, I wouldn't try to improve you this much, and this is what somebody took the time to do for me. 
Yeah. You know? So now we turn the page. It's a new chapter, about a year at Hearth and Drive yeah, so far. Yeah, a year for me, just when they're about seven, almost eight months. Yep. Yeah. And now, you, you know, they're going to be, just like you said, the 23-year-old kid that looks at you guys. Yep. And hopefully one day we'll be in the situation to where yeah. they're raising Absolutely. people up in the kitchen. That's a big responsibility in a sense and the creativeness you have to have. But Hearth and Dram, talk about the food program. I, I mean, I know it and I love it, but what are you guys doing there? So, uh, you know, our, our uh, kind of tagline for Jeff and I is uh, meat and salt, you know, and whatever we a want. Lot, a lot of fire. Uh, that's kind of been how we like to cook for a long time. Um, I mean, honestly, as far as food goes, we change the menu a lot. Uh, we keep everything very seasonal. So typically we'll bring something in, we'll put it on the menu, we'll run it till we can't get it anymore, and then we'll change it. So, you know, from like probably right in the beginning of April through probably October, the menu changes about once a week, not everything, two or three things at a time. Um, like I said, we bring in, you know, the best stuff we can get, and we, we sell it until we can't get it anymore. Um, you know, it's, we, we use a really high-end proteins, um, a lot of fire, pretty much everything touches the grill. You know, we definitely do get the stigma of, like, all meat, all whiskey, but we do have, like, all of the other things as well. We do vegetables very well. We have a lot of vegetarian dishes on the menu. We make our own tofu in-house, which is really awesome. Um, you know, Chef, let me jump in. Share that story you said tonight about the local cheese company. Oh, I think yeah, that's yeah. a great story. Um, so uh, we're, we're fat in our minds so we like to eat everything um <laughs> cheese is one and, of those and in yeah uh, you know science. physically too yeah. <laughs> cheese, cheese is one of those things that like makes me really really happy it always has um so about three months ago i would say one of our guys came to us and uh, one of our purveyors and he's like i have this cheese you have to have and we're like great no problem we'll take it um so we bring it in and it was absolutely amazing uh it's right here it's this avalanche this cheddar. is it oh we got yeah, it. And then he's it. telling me the story about it and he's like so this creamery, um, they shut down about a year and a half ago. They just didn't want to make cheese anymore. Uh, they have some other things going on. They held on to a bunch of the wheels of this cheese. So it's a goat cheddar. Um, it's pretty widely regarded as, like, one of the best cheeses to ever come out of Colorado, and it is. Um, so they're aging it for, you know, a period of time. So what they did was when they closed, they held on to a bunch of these wheels. They aged them for about an extra year, and then they started selling them. So we bought one, and we loved it. And then we called our guy, and we're like, how many more of these exist? And he said, three. And I said, I'll take them. Done and done. So we it, now it breaks have, apart like a Parmesan. It is. Super aged. It's, it's kind of crystalline yeah, like a Parmesan. It's not very Parmesan goaty well. either. Like, well, this is like a real aged. Yeah, so it's, this it's, has been uh, aged for, rough. I think the, the original aging is about a year. Uh, and then this was an additional year. And then we've had it for a little bit. So it's probably about two and a half years. Um, we have one wheel that we've been working off of left. And then we have one that we haven't opened yet. Uh, so wow. it's a cloth-bound cheddar. We they wrap never. it in cloths, and we're honestly just going to kind of sit on it for a while. And, right. Chef, tell people, when does cheese expire? Never. Thank never. you. Honestly, it starts to change Thank colors. You. <laughs> if, if it gets real pink, <laughs> we're going to eat it and not sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much how it goes. It starts to get like, pink or brown, then you start, then that's us. So I would have thought it more like in the Romano right. Parmesan it, family. I would never have not, called yeah. it cheddar. Right. I love cheddar, and huh. I mean, I love the Parmesan yeah. stuff, too. It's this is like artistic license. If, yeah. They say it's a cheddar. It's a cheddar to us. I mean, know? it's 2019. We can pretty much say whatever we want and yeah. do whatever we want. Point, <laughs> I, so. I could just sit down and <laughs> Not always. Eat. I would just eat that. <laughs> Going back to what Brian said, and at risk of, of seeming like an idiot, but I've done it for many years. Um, <laughs> a little bit of mold on your cheese in the fridge. The whole block doesn't need to go out. Oh, no, just no. cut it like my mom would say. Cut the you mold sh- off. Yeah, scrape not, it off. Yeah. Not even the shredded stuff. I'll just pull the mold out. And really? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I'll keep going. And even so, you still get like more flavor from it. It's just a little funkier. It's yeah. just like a little blue. Well, I mean, and like, shouldn't we clarify? It's, we're not talking craft, folks. No, we're no, talking like real good, cheese. Yeah. So one thing that uh, one thing that I'm really uh, notoriously bad about is if I have cheese at my house, I like to let it sit out. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pull a piece, like a wheel of cheese out, I'll put it on a plate, leave it on my counter, eat a little bit of it. When I go to sleep at night, I wrap it and I put it in one of the cabinets, like where my plates go, so my dog doesn't eat it. The problem with that is we definitely drink a bit, and here and there I forget about it. So then I'll find about a half wheel of super ripe, funky cheese in my cabinet like three days later. <laughs> you figure out if you're going to roll the dice. Awesome. Yeah. I usually <laughs> almost always do roll too. the dice. Yeah. Let's do a setup. we got another segment with you guys. Cool. The next segment's in the kitchen, so we'll bring some food out. Great, we yeah. got about five minutes. We'll fire some stuff up awesome. and, and bring it out. But I want to set this question up because for me, not only is the uh, atmosphere, the ambiance, the great food, but one very important to me thing to me is the bar program. How does the bar program complement the kitchen? How does the kitchen complement the bar program? You know you have a big amount of whiskey there. Yes. And I had, a, two years ago, I had a birthday dinner there at Hearth and Dram, and they wheeled out the old-fashioned bar. Heart, yeah. 
right to your table, wow. making old fashions table side. I want to talk about the bar program when we get back and great. the beers and those types of things that you're sourcing. I think it's great. And these two chefs from Hearth and Dram, this is great, Chef Adam and Chef Jeff. They're going to stick around with us. Same with Ralph Kaminsky, Brian Freeman, myself, Greg Hollenbach. We'll take a break from the kitchen. Check us out on Facebook Live. We're going to take that break right now. It is the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Thanks, Greg. Hello, Facebook family. Holy cow, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. And I snuck out of the crowd. I grabbed him, Chef Dan Flanagan. How Welcome are you, again, Rich? Dan. We love having you here. How are you? I'm doing pretty darn good. It's a little toasty. It's busy. That's good. Busy is good. So, Dan, why don't you give us a little update what's happening at the ACF? Biggest thing coming up, ACF Golf Tournament. Nice. I'm the Interlocking Hotel, July 15th, I believe. It's the Monday, um, 7.30 arrival, 8.30 shotgun. Everything's covered in there, beer on a couple holes, drinks on a couple holes, food on a lot of holes, um, lunch afterwards. All the money, all the money goes to the ACF Apprenticeship Program, which obviously is near to dear to my heart, being an instructor, trying to get all these kids ready. And I say kids, some of them are true adults, so it's it's time to let's make some money. Yeah, make some money and help help our industry. They're our future, because one day you and I aren't going to be doing this, and somebody's got to feed us. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Hey, Dan, thanks for coming down and updating us. Always a pleasure. We're going to listen to our sponsors. We'll be back in just a few. Supply. Did you know Colorado is suffering from the most severe drought since 2012? Water shortages are very real, especially to Colorado farmers. Now here's the good news. Aquaponic farming uses 90% less water than traditional farming, while producing four and a half times more food per square foot. Using traditional farming techniques, farmers would flood their fields with large quantities of water, leaving much of this water underutilized and just plain wasted. But because aquaponics is a recirculating system, the only water used is what the plants uptake and some very minor evaporation. South River Aquaponics has been running a 55,000 gallon system year round for four years, and we use less than 500 gallons of water per day. Education is very important to us here at South River Aquaponics. I invite you to learn more about aquaponics at southriveraquaponics.com. South River Aquaponics, the future of farming. Hey, Colorado, this is Brian Freeman, owner of Growers Organic and a host on the Modern Eater Talk Show. Growers Organic is a Colorado sourcing company who provides Colorado's greatest chefs with the best organic produce. I've been partnering with local and regional farms for the last 20 years, and our returning customers know they can count on us over and over again. Chefs who receive the highest rating on Good Food 100 choose Growers Organic for their organic produce needs because we're experts at bridging the gap between the farm and the table. Join us in the organic revolution and go organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Hey guys, Chris Johnson here, owner of Rome Sausage, your hyper-local source for all things sausage awesomeness. My family is proud to carry on the fine one minute to the life founder jerry rome by producing a variety of amazing sausage in small batches with an eye on quality not quantity every batch is made here in the great state of colorado by hand mixing spices utilizing lean cuts of pork to make an outstanding product sourcing ingredients and materials locally we are committed to supporting local vendors chefs restaurants and the entire colorado food scene getting hungry yet Brats, Italian, breakfast, hot Polish, green chili, chicken apple, and the world's best chorizo. You can source all of our sausage through a variety of food service distributors. Here, Plenty. Period. Call us. We'll come direct. You want a custom item? We'll do that too. Samples and, of course, sausage jokes can be had by contacting me directly and sausage.com or by phone at 303-296-7663. Three, two... Okay, back to the kitchen in just a minute, but right now, you know what time it is. Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. What is A-Plus Beverage Solutions? They are the premium tap installers. Chances are if you're drinking delicious craft beer right here in Colorado and beyond, Jeff Rourke and his family put in those tap systems at A-Plus Beverage Solutions. We want you to, Mr. Brewery Owner, Mr. Bar Owner, Mr. Restaurant Owner, we want you to have an A-plus report card for your tap systems. Get a hold of Jeff Rourke. Pouring in efficient beer, uh, temperatures off. There are so many problems that can go wrong that make you look bad as a business owner, and there's no reason to if you call Jeff Rourke with A-plus Beverage Solutions. If you're pouring in efficient beer, boys, what are you doing? You're pouring, pouring your, your money, money down, down the drain. drain. Don't pour <laughs> your money down the drain, Ross. All you got to do is call Jeff Rourke and A-plus Beverage Solutions. Greg, did you know that I used to own a bar or part? I was... 
partners in a nightclub? Did I you know did that? I did not, though. <laughs> did you pour a fish in beer? I don't know. Was it a little foam? I was walking around talking to the girls at the I time. understand. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. Here's a pin. You might have needed this at one point in time, Ross. 720-272-3809. One more time, Greg. You got it. 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke and A-plus Beverage Solutions. Feed me now. This is the <laughs> Modern Eater Show. That's right, boy. I'm starving. And now it's time for In the Kitchen. How am I supposed to keep on feeding you? Kill people? Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. Award-winning competition cooks and purveyors of specialty barbecue supplies right here in Denver, Colorado. Standing by the fire. ProudSoulsBBQ.com. Feed me all night, you know. You're hot. Ross, is there anything you can do all night long anymore? Can you stay up Are all you night long? Are you saying I'm old? <laughs> did he, did uh, he just uh, call me old? No, I'm asking you. <laughs> it was a question. Was I probably could eat that cheese that those guys just had over here <laughs> almost all night long. Uh, I don't know. Studios, I am old. Back to <laughs> studio kitchen, Colorado. The Modern Eater Show continues. Uh, we've got these guys with us from Hearth and Dram and Chef Adam Vero and Chef Jeff Hickman with us here tonight. What an honor and a pleasure. And I just have to make a mention, and maybe you guys, so right here, Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions, uh, these guys give us all these fun toys, the green egg, this Everdoor, this uh, Yoder smoker. I'm crazy that I have this thing behind us in a show. I'm burning up over here. You see me sweating. It's because of that. But this is the, that's chef life, right? It is. It's beautiful. Sweating all the time. What do you guys think of these toys back here? They're really cool. Really, really awesome, yeah. Little I, Heston range. I love, yeah. the, I love the plancha aspect of it. You know, yeah, the like fact the, that you can yeah, do like everything outside, that's, that's, that's really great. So for all your barbecue needs, why not? Proud right. Souls Barbecue and Provisions. If you guys stop by there, it's on uh, 20, 25th and Federal Boulevard, oh, right down the awesome, street. Check and you get to meet two of the owners are here tonight, guys. So poke around. Tony is right here, right behind us. Yeah, awesome. And and these guys, they also sell all kinds of supplies, spices, rubs, everything you can imagine. Cool. Everything you could possibly want. So thank you, Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. Bar programs, so important. Um, it's kind of the yin and the yang of any restaurant, right? Would you got either one of you guys knock it out of the park? Talk about that bar program. So we have really amazing bartenders. Um, they do work very well with us. We do have a lot of conversations, which is really nice. Uh, it's nice to kind of be a part of the process, and they are a little bit as well with us. Um, as far as our bar program goes, you know, we do have a lot of whiskey. We have about 500, uh, which is really... Wait, pause for a second. 500. 500 Different whiskeys. varieties. Different varieties of whiskey, yeah. Not ne necessarily different distilleries, no. but varieties. Yeah, we have mostly, uh, you know, we, we try and do as much American as possible. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have pretty much everything. We have everything that's good, I would say. You know, we do do a lot of tastings. People bring things in all the time, and they ask us to, you know, taste them, and they want us to buy it. But, you know, we really only buy the best stuff. Uh, the wall is only so big, so, you know, we have to right. save space. Um, we, uh, you know, we try and treat our local distillers, obviously, as uh, the closest. Ooh, you're giving me Randy doing that, man. <laughs> Talk local to me. So, uh, yeah, we work with laws a lot. We also work with uh, Bear Creek. Yep. Um, Bear Creek. Which is what we're drinking right now. Do you have a favorite, Chef? So we have, so we have five private barrels of it's whiskey, hard. which is really awesome for us. So basically what we do is we go to a distillery you know, that we have a, a relationship with, and what they'll do is they'll basically pull samples out of barrels that are aging in their rack house, and uh, we'll sit there and we'll taste through them. We taste them at barrel proof initially, and then you know, usually you can knock a couple out really quick that you don't like. And then from there, we kind of water them back so we can taste them at like a regular proof or a better, like a lower proof, um, so you can kind of get some of the nuanced flavors out of it. So we have five right now. Uh, the one that we're drinking is uh, probably, I would say, our favorite. Yeah. It's a Bear Creek bourbon. Um, so the really special thing about having the private barrel, which like most restaurants, almost all restaurants don't, typically like liquor stores will buy them. Um, but the thing about the private barrel is, you know, if you think about going to the liquor store and buying a bottle of whiskey, about 100 barrels or so go into one thing and then they bottle that out. So you mix the 100 barrels together to make what's in that bottle that you buy at the liquor store. For us, we went through and we tasted a bunch of stuff and we picked one barrel that was not done aging yet. And then we said, this is the one that we think is going to taste the best in three, four, five months. Mm -hmm. And then they bottle it for us and we have it on tap at the restaurant. So the cool thing about that is like tasting our Bear Creek bourbon versus the one that you'd buy at the store, it's, it's drastically different. Yep. You know, I think the biggest difference is I see like we have a Laws Rye Whiskey that we took off of the line that won best bonded whiskey in the world a couple of years ago. Um, we took ours six months early, so it's not bonded. But ours versus the bonded finished Laws Rye is drastically different. Huge, like different flavor notes, like certain things you can pull out that you wouldn't get out of that one. So it's really nice, like, 
It's very, very different, very special it's for us. It's a lot of fun. Even if you don't understand it or you can't taste those subtle yeah. nuances, you can still come in and try five whiskeys on a flight and, you know, have fun. There's no not a wrong Absolutely. way to do it. You're still drinking whiskey. And speaking yeah. of Laws, you know. we have Steve Kurowski here, the marketing director for uh, Laws Whiskey House with us in the house tonight. So can I ask you probably a dumb question? I mean, I, I love bourbon, and I'm, huh? I had what you're drinking now. It's really good. Do you drink or do you recommend drinking bourbon with a meal the way people might normally drink wine or beer? Or is it more before, after, rather than with? Yeah, you know, you're asking Jeff and I, typically we recommend drinking bourbon, period. That's <laughs> kind of the end of that one. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a personal preference. Uh, you know, same thing with food. We're not going to tell you how to eat your food. You picked out something off the menu, you're going to eat it. We want you to enjoy it the way that you want to enjoy it. If you want M&Ms in your mac and cheese, I'm not going to tell you no. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, if but, you no. like it, I love it. But truly, <laughs> with, with whiskey and the berm to, uh, for, to really appreciate it, I'd like to drink it as an aperitif, just a, a, after dinner because it's going to clear your palate. You're going to get a little bit of that burn that's going to set you in the direction you want to. Before dinner, I probably it'd be an appetite suppressant to me. I'd just keep drinking. <laughs> yeah, we usually yeah. do that, but... Uh, um, so the bar program, last time I was there and they wheeled over that great old-fashioned card to me, I think they were using 291 as kind of your old-fashioned whiskey. I, I don't know if you're still doing you know, that. It honestly kind of depends. Uh, I, I'm sure there's there's a one. I'm sure there's one that they all use. Mm -hmm. But honestly, like, the guys are pretty, they're super smart guys. And, you know, if you sit down at the bar and you're talking to one bartender versus the other and he says, what should I have, they're going to recommend what they like. Um, which is great. You know, our cocktails are obviously standard and they're, they're the same every time. But when it comes to, like, talking to the bartenders, they're going to give you something that if, if you're asking for a certain recommendation, you want an old-fashioned and you want it to be awesome, they're going to tell you what they think is the best. Chef, let me ask you something on that. I, I'm, I'm one of those guys I say, I don't know that I want to waste something good and mix other things yeah, with it. Gonna... I'm a purist. If you're going to give me, I mean, my first single barrel was Whistle Pig yeah, 15 if, years if, ago. If Outlaw and so, walked in and saw using the, the Bonda bottle or something, and, and you're mixing old fashioned with it, he'd probably go a little sideways with uh -huh. it. Like, ah, I like my booze, the way my booze yeah, taste. But know, I, mean, we, I typically drink it straight. Um, we actually buy uh, Kentucky Limestone water. So it's the water that like they use to make bourbon in Kentucky. And we have it in little dropper bottles. So, you know, if it's a little too hot for you, a little, a little too much alcohol, then you can kind of water it back. It's with, yeah, um, that's it's pretty cool. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's kind of, you know, your preference. Like, like I said, we have five barrels. Um, I'd say the lowest proof is probably like 90, 90 on all out of the five. Like 115, we have a whistle pig. It's about 12 years old. It's hot. Barrel proof, so it's like 130. Ooh, oh wow, it's, it's hot. Yeah. yeah, it's it's spicy and almost. It's, it's absolutely. But I but I bet it still tastes good. I mean, yeah, that's, it's, definitely, it's definitely like you take a sip and then you water it back. Yeah. yeah. So it, with but. about with about a minute and a half left, I want to do this because I was looking through Westward this a great article, farmers market. You were doing some unique things. Could you talk about that quickly? Yeah. So we went to the farmers market last week, and uh, you know, basically they gave us an ingredient to work with, which was radishes. And uh, it was pretty much a free reign on whatever we wanted to do. So we showed up there about, you know, 845 and pushed a cart over from the restaurant. Yeah. Like with all of our stuff in the restaurant, cart, yeah. we walked over because we are only about two blocks from there. And uh, morning. we literally just walked. They gave us $100, walked around the market, and bought a bunch we of stuff. We got coffee and then, first. Oh, yeah, we got bought <laughs> coffees, yeah. <laughs> it, it looked so good and so raw, and it really highlighted you guys at your best. And, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Congratulations. Lot of fun to do that. That. Another 30 seconds talking about you have an event coming up as well. The we have a lot of events so coming up What's right the one you wanted to talk about? The beast, the whole, oh, beast, the whole beast? beast feast. That's that's just something we do in the restaurant. So we'd like to get about a five day notice, and we have several different menus. You can pick your protein. So we do a, a duck one, a lamb, goat, beef, seafood, and, and pig, and pig. So between five and seven courses, depending. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's like eighty five dollars. Done in. and we'll done. Do yeah, I'm doing yeah, that. So it's, 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 a, it's a party. Oh, sounds it's good. a party. <laughs> we're we're gonna. <laughs> you're gonna leave very full, maybe miserable. Hopefully you've eaten <laughs> enough where you question your judgment, and uh, we'll come out and have a shot with you. After that. That's we'll, we'll have a, we'll have a fernet. Yeah, we'll have a fernet with you at the end of your meal, and it's 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 our fun. Thank you, uh, Chef Jeff. Appreciate fine. it, Chef Adam Vero. Thank I you. really appreciate all the Absolutely. work you Thanks did for here having tonight. Us. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll be back for hour number two in a flash. Zach, I'm here with the Spice Guy, Zach. I want to make sure I have the mic on. I've been guilty of, of doing that. So, Zach, we got six minutes, brother. I want to welcome Zach, our newest sponsor, 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's, yeah, it's a super pleasure to be on a list with a ton of other local companies, and everybody on this list is doing something awesome. Uh, and yeah, we're proud to be a part of it. You belong there, baby. You've earned it. You've thank earned you, it. thank you. Thanks for supporting us and supporting all of you, making this all better. Yeah, we're, we're so stoked to be on the team. About a couple things. One thing I know Chef Roy is looking for is what's the new trend? What's the new thing that's coming up? What, what are some of the flavors that you see coming up? So 2018, we predicted pretty correctly. We thought that uh, Lebanese and uh, Middle Eastern influences would make their way into Denver, and we were right. Uh, I think for 2019 and 20, we'll be seeing a lot more African spice blends come into town. So uh, spices like Ras Al Hanout or Berber or Piri Piri, some of these uh, different flavors, uh, a little bit more cultural. There'll just be a little bit of resurgence of new flavor to come in, uh, especially in like the nicer to find dining scene. We'll start exploring some of those new things. Absolutely. It won't be on the fringe. It'll be more mainstream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and so you'll see, you're going to start seeing some of those stronger, bolder, more earthy type flavors. Yeah, I think that's what people are getting to, right? Like everybody wants a, a non-GMO something or another that tastes amazing and like can it be organic, can it be grass-fed? And so the answer is yes, like we can do all this stuff and still bring like a brand new flavor from a new culture that most people aren't familiar with yet. Uh, I think like the resurgence of Latin America came up so hard onto the scene for maybe 15 years and like really got everybody acquainted with eating foods that are spiced correctly. And I think that that's just going to grow and grow and grow. And I think North Africa and the Middle East will be probably the most prevalent new flavors that we see. Well, you know, that part of the world, those are our newest immigrants. Yeah, no kidding. So they brought their food. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, food has an amazing connection. It's something that people want to get involved in. No. So, I mean, there, so you can reach out to Zach for salt, for anything new up and coming. Here's what I did, just to give you an idea of what this guy is capable of. <laughs> I'm getting ready to come up with a new bar chip, something that you can eat at the bar that will make you thirsty, make you drink, help your bar sale. So I'm like, okay, I've got an idea for something. I reach out to Zach, I email him, call him Friday morning, Friday afternoon. He's got a bag of this for me. Look at this. It's right there. <laughs> it's ready to put on the chip. So that's, that's what you've got with Zach. It's, it's one thing to have a wide variety of flavors. It's another to have knowledge to know where the market's going to help guide you. It's a whole other thing to have that agility. To have that agility to be able to, to react so quickly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Zach, I hope you're not that fast at everything. <laughs> You know My talking. wife is here somewhere to probably pat you on the back. Uh, now, the other thing I've noticed, Zach, you're everywhere. Trying to be. I, I mean, the other day, last week, I go to Super Mega BN, there's your stuff on the show. Yeah. Uh, go to Costa Bonita, there's your stuff <laughs> over there. I mean, you're, you're the, the, you are truly the spice guy. Yeah, well, we ended, you know, we came to town in 2014, and we've... We've made a pretty good impact on the market, and a lot of it is that we come in and we service the heck out of our customers. We, you see a sales guy from the Spice Guy in person once a week. So you're never managing your own spices. We're doing that for you. You have a restaurant to run. The last thing you want to deal with is your spice rack. Uh, that's the first thing we want to deal with for you. So take that off your plate. Let you... You know, there's no sense of stepping over pennies to pick up, or stepping over dollars to pick up pennies, right? So that's what we come in to do. We're here. We're going to do that for you. We're going to make it happen. This, you know, here, here's, what's, here's what's fun about that. To help you create it, help you inventory, the master, inventory management. I mean, truly, it's one-stop shopping. You take care of it. Yeah, and you're saving money most times. We did a deal with Smoke at the source last week. Oh, they were here all week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a deal with uh, Bill. We're going to save him $5,000 a year. <laughs> We're going to save Bill $5,000 a year on one product, one blend. Holy cow. One product. How much? $5,000 a year on one blend. That's some cash, baby. Yeah. That's hey, that's going to Mexico. I just went to Cancun and didn't spend that close to that. That's taking a bunch of people to Mexico. Wow, Zach. Well... Thanks for joining the family, being a part of this. This is going to be fun. I can't wait to see 
what comes out of this. Yeah, I'm so excited for that part especially. Like uh, Greg and I have talked so much about what this looks like and how we make this happen and what we can do uh, long term. And I think it's a it's a really good fit for everybody involved. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> that first one's free. Go back to that. Your mute this mute zone or something. Oh. Well, that would do it. You would do it. Okay. So, yeah, we're Thanks, excited. Jay. Jay's been helping us with sound as we totally messed this up for the last six minutes. Oh, no, well, that, you know what? The scenes at the Modern Eater, if you haven't been here, you totally have to come down because there's, we have, what is this, a thousand square feet in here? <laughs> maybe. And maybe there's 50 of your best friends in here eating uh, amazing food from Adam and the crew at Hearth and Dram. It's fun. You know, this is a place of creativity, and, and you can find the people to help you put it all together right here. Yeah, this is it. You know, Zach, I do want to thank you so much for joining on board because we're going to give you a great return on your advertising dollar, but also we are going to raise the bar here. I agree, totally. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. We'll be back. Muscles and tissue to restore function and create a new, healthier path for blood to flow, addressing the cause and not just the symptoms of ED. Evolution Medical Group's technology, protocols, and personalized treatment plans are designed to address the root cause of your ED and restore function naturally. If you're ready to regain spontaneity and performance in the bedroom, call Evolution Medical Group at 303-420-8955. That's 303-420-8955. Or go to evolutionmedicalgroup.com. That's evolutionmedicalgroup.com. The following is a paid advertisement. The opinions, viewpoints, and promises made during the following program are not those of KHOW, its staff, management, or parent company, iHeartMedia Incorporated. How about a bite to eat? It's time for the second course, hour number two of the Modern Eater. What are you hungry for? Here's to a meal we're all here for. Delicious and tasty. Now we're getting to the good stuff. With your hosts, Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Parker, and Brian Freeman. All right, yes, indeedy, Mr. Tweedy. It's hour number two of the Modern Eater Show right here from Studio Kitchen, Colorado on 630K. How our iHeartRadio affiliate and live on Facebook as well, Brian. We are back. We've got a lot of ground to cover in this last hour, but this was really important to us. And Thirsty Fest, you're saying, what, Thirsty Fest? Do you know what Thirsty Fest is? Oh, I know. It's, it's drinking for a good cause, my friend. That's what I know it's all about. Benefiting water for people, and we have to introduce our guest, and she's right there, Julia Mountain. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. It's good to see you here. Yeah. Give us a rundown. What are people looking forward to here? All right. Yeah. So Water for People is a wonderful organization. They're based um, right here out of Denver, Colorado. However, they have a reach in all of the deepest parts of the world. So um, we basically got this group of volunteers together and we're all working outside of our normal jobs trying to put on this big event to show the city to show people um, everywhere that they can contribute to a cause greater than themselves and have a good time. Um, so we've got this beer festival, we've got local breweries coming in, we've got music, we've got games, uh, we've got food trucks, and we're just trying to get everyone together to party for a purpose. So. And it's all about health safe, health safe water. Yeah, yeah. So sanitation services, um, hygiene, uh, safe water, those are all the primary uh, causes for Water for People. So we think of, I've become kind of a water snob lately, which is, oh. I mean, it's a luxury though. I mean, you think about how, here we are, Denver, Colorado, you turn your tap on, your faucet, you go buy some bottled water. It's so readily available to us, so many options and choices. But with this, you're trying to spread awareness for those that don't have our luxuries. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we, we try to just bring in um, extra fundraising and extra awareness, right? And the more people that we can get to know that there's this wonderful organization right here in their backyard in Denver, uh, the more people that understand, you know, there's people out there who are looking for still clean water or safe water, hygiene services. And I mean, the programs go so far to... Um, give educational programs. You know, a lot of people in the world don't necessarily know that every time you use the restroom, you need to wash your hands or... People don't uh, know that yet? <laughs> no, well, remember, wait. I mean, we're very fortunate in the country we live in. Wait, what? <laughs> What'd you say? Wash yeah. your wash hands your, after you use sure? the bathroom. Now, listen, I was taught you wash them before because <laughs> you don't know. I know what I got. 
you know, <laughs> I don't. You don't know what the world. I, I don't know what the world around me has, you know. And 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 now listen. And I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say what I got's a lot less uh, less bad. Can than we just the, say <laughs> with, for you, Jake, before and after? Please. Yes, please, <laughs> that's, please. That's before and after, or if you shake Jay's hand recently, go wash yours. So um, <laughs> to get back on track, Julia, <laughs> give us an example of, of the end user that benefits from this. Yeah, so there are a lot of different types of end users because Water for People is really focused on kind of putting themselves out of business, right? So they, they provide this kind of backbone of support and then try and support the communities to take the initiative and really do what they want. So there's a community in India, for example, that we use a, um, a lot as an example of the job. I'm going to butcher the name. Jablandu. <laughs> uh, probably not the right way to say that. I do apologize. Um, but they're, they're basically getting the um, support and services that they need to really start their own entrepreneurial services within the community. And that is something that's so separated from water that they've got cell phones, power being provided to people through themselves rather than, um, you know, just having everything kind of handed over. Something that struck me that she says is they're in the business to go out of business. The business got That's business. pretty powerful. I mean, yeah. truly well, is. Well, it's, it's hopefully we can help the world mm -hmm. with water and understand how important it is for everyone. That, that it, it could put them out of business. I don't see that coming soon, I will tell no, you. But that's, um, that's, you know. the, that's the goal anyway. So now that we're sold, how do we participate? So you participate. Uh, it's actually next Saturday. Woo! So we will slightly maybe kind of cross paths here with the, the modern eater and us. You're but. Fine. Um, We'll be at Improper City next Saturday okay. from 6 to 10 p.m. We've got over 20 local breweries. Uh, tickets are $25 wow. a piece. But honestly, we've got so much beer coming in, a lot of spirits and kombucha, um, other drinks as well, non-alcoholic beverages for anyone that's interested in that kind of thing. Uh, I understand you don't have to party super hard yeah, to support yeah, a good yeah. cause. But, um, yes, yeah, so we've got all these people coming in from 6 to 10 p.m., $25. Tickets are available at the door as well. It's at Improper City in Rhino, which I think is 32nd and Walnut. Um, a really cool venue. They've just opened up their patio. So this is their first summer that they've actually got a patio open. There's is that where a chicken That's was? awesome. Yes, I believe so. And, Julia, tell me, how much does, does an event like this raise for awareness? Well, hopefully, you know, a fair amount of money. It's also this year coinciding with a big conference. So AWWA puts on, which is the American Water, <laughs> we'll skip that. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a large group. Um, and they put on a big conference every year. So a lot of water industry professionals are associated with our volunteer group that are putting on the beer festival. Um, and... With that, we've got a, a lot of large companies coming in and contributing money. So they're sponsoring the event. We've already got quite a few donations in place, which is why we can offer the event to the public for such a reasonable price um, because we've raised a lot of money kind of outside the door. And we just really want to use the actual event to bring awareness to the Denver community and bring people in. Next, That's awesome. Very perfect. Next Saturday, uh, Next Saturday, Thirsty Fest. Don't Thirsty don't fest. goof. Bring your proof, Brian. They're gonna want to see your ID if you're drinking that beer. Definitely. Yep. And uh, 25 bucks at the door. Water for people, and uh, just a great cause. And Julie, I can't. Improper thank city. Improper, Improper city. city. Be there. Be there. Uh, if we weren't working, we'd be there next week too. We love that type of you stuff. You can come later. We'll get you some tickets. Thank you so much. <laughs> you. Uh, that's fantastic. Thank you, Julie. You you like gluten free stuff? Yeah. This is some of the best gluten-free bread ever. We couldn't live without you, John Irvin. John Irvin from Gluten-Free Things. Welcome back to the family. Not that you left or anything. We love you so much. But here you are with that delicious loaf of gluten-free bread, my friend. Well, I just went on a little bit of a vacation, you know. That's right. Wait for the, sp the springtime to finish and the, all the good things. But yeah, I'm glad to be back. This is tonight. Tonight, I'll tell you something. The food is phenomenal. The, uh, it, was it not ever phenomenal here, John? Come <laughs> on know, now. It, it is. You know what? It's, i got to come up with a new word. <laughs> it is, no, it really, really, really was. And I'm not a huge sausage person, but this stuff is really good. These Spice guys have done a great job. Not phenomenal job, but a great job, great which job. is just as good. But anyways, uh, no, these guys are doing a fantastic job back there. And so, yeah, I'm very happy to be back. Got my bread. 
You know, we've got my deli loaf and stuff. We've got and your new packaging. My new packaging. Yes, I do. You're looking and, good, my friend. And well, this bread, is that's the best in the business right well, there. I'm going to slice some up and let everybody taste it because I keep on telling everybody what it tastes like. It's a, one thing I love about John, he's always got a sample loaf with him. Absolutely. I mean, I think he cooks it in his back pocket, but it is always ready to go. I love you, John, for that. You're always share the word about gluten-free Right from the man, gluten-free things, John Irving. We're gluten-free and vegan. Hey, listen, and and I might go gluten-free just for a while, and it's a a health thing to where uh, with my thyroid issues and bioidentical hormones is what they're trying now, but they're working through all these things. But gluten may be one of the things that's blocking those things. Very well, could be. So um, I'm going to give it a go around here. You're going to see me there at the bakery uh, weekly, John. Sounds good to me. I'll charge you twice as much. Hey, why not? Why not? (laughs) Thank you, John. No, thank you. Appreciate Thanks it. Now I'm, I'm excited to be back. You'll hear this voice early and often right here on the Modern Eater Show. Okay, let's break. Yes, we'll we've got back. great stuff afterwards, though. Tell them about it, Greg. Well, someone's standing in the way, but it, I think it's Infinite Harvest. Infinite Harvest, it you sure like is. You like microgreens, Julia? Yeah. Microgreens. I, I love microgreens. Do you Make see sure. these, all these beautiful micros right in front of you there? Really hard to not actually. Well, you should. Snack. Go ahead. Snack yeah. away. There's, Can I? Yes, they're snack worthy for sure. So Infinite Harvest, they're coming up next. And some of the best microgreens that I know around from a a, a hydroponic system just right up the street. Yep. Okay. All right. We'll take that break. What a great show tonight, Brian. Isn't this fun? It is very Crowded house, and it is going well. Friends and family. Let's just go around the room. So we have uh, Ross Kaminsky here, morning show host on KHOW. We've got the guys from Proud Souls. We have Steve uh, from Tommy Knocker Brewery. We have the Spice Guy right there. We have a new... Uh, friend here from Black Bear. Right here, right here. Look Black at this. Sky. Black Sky, Sky Brewery, Brewery. with some watermelon pel- pel- watermelon pel- petal and demon seed. Martin's here. He owns an art gallery. He's right next to you, Julia, the big guy with the black shirt on. He owns an art gallery. He's here with his wife as well. Gigi, there's Biker Jim. Have you ever had Biker Jim's Gourmet Hot Dogs, Julia? No, I haven't. There's Biker Jim right there in the corner. Who the else? The boys do we have from here? Hearth and Dram, JT Eber- Eberly. J- JT Eberly, Hearth, Eberly, Hearth and Dram, of course, Little Rich Snyder. Jeez, uh, with Chef Danny Flanagan, Chef Elon Wenzel's here as well with the Element Knife Company. And uh, what a packed what house. What a packed house. It's a good night tonight in the Mile High City, June 1st. And we'll take a break. We'll continue in a couple of minutes. We're going to listen to some words from our sponsors, which we'd really appreciate. If you believe in Hyperlocal, we have some of the best sponsors around. Get out and support them. Do us a favor. Go out and support them. All right. We'll break right now from Studio Kitchen Colorado. You are listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Thanks, Greg. What a great segment. And I've got Chef Adam here <laughs> from Heart and Dram. How's it going? Thanks for coming. Oh, Welcome. Thanks for having us. We're super excited to be here. So. I had one bite already, and I know it was just like, it w- the little bite tasted like that. It was awesome. incredible. What did you prepare for us tonight? You know, I'm pretty sure we just raided Brian's fridge Let's today. Right so, uh, Go ahead. We uh, basically did a little sausage plate with some of our house-made pickles and mustard. Saw that. Um, right now, Jeff's finishing up a little elk tataki. So a quick seared elk. It's super lean. Obviously, you don't want to cook it too, too much. Uh, we did that with some uh, really awesome pickled cherry peppers that we got from Growers Organic. And uh, awesome. these really adorable baby vegetables he got us and all the greens and everything. It was really nice. Uh, right now, we're working on a little lamb with some Vodabon from the Spice Guys. Uh, we're doing that with a little black garlic, some charred uh, white radicchio. Holy cow. And a little mushroom ragu. Then after that, we're going to finish off with some pork chops that we got from the Parker Pastures. Wow. Oh, great tomato vinaigrette. Chef, this is awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. When, in between segments, I'm gonna go get me some of that. Awesome. We'll be over there. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Why don't you guys? We're gonna take an off ramp. Listen to a few words from our sponsors. They will make you better. We'll be right back. Then you'll know the importance of a quality knife and proper care. My training in Japan exposed me to exceptional cutlery. That's why I am so excited to offer you the knives. Yes, sir. In love with. Element Knife Company is chef driven, and my goal Jared. is to support and yes, sir. at me for a knife clinic or can you hear me? Knife.com or by simply calling yeah, well, yo, what's up? 460 4628. 130 to the live. Think Element Knife hey, Company. If you- 130 to the live. Or need a graphic designer? To the live. 
Design does it all. Take the headache out of trying to build your own website or design graphics. Who has time for that? F. Johnson Design will get you up and running with a professional and great looking website. Design sharp graphics to your specifications and have your site up faster than you think. Logo, package design, SEO coding, and more. F. Johnson Design did the Modern Eater's website. Go to themoderneater.com to check out some of their work. Reach out to F. Johnson Design at fjohnsondesign.com. Summer is a upon us and it's about time. I've gotten Kenny Brewmaster at Brews Beers. At Brews, badass Belgian style beers are our thing and we're welcoming summer with a big selection of warm weather beers. Session strength beers that you can kick back and relax with. Fruit beers, fresh and vibrant. Plus wild beers, sour beers and all the classics. Doubles, triples, quads and wit beers. Brews Beers is at 67th and Pecos in Midtown. We have food trucks daily, a big spacious patio voted one of Denver's best, and 20 seconds to the live calendar, our third anniversary bash with live bands, tasty food, and of course great beers is Saturday, July 20th. Check it out on social media or go to our website, brewsbeers.com. Beers, B-R-U-Z, at 1675 West 67th Avenue, just 10 minutes. Three, two, one. You're hot. Okay, back to the show in just a minute. But right now, uh, first of all, Infinite Harvest coming right up. Some of our favorite people here in studio with us. But right now, it's an official welcome. Starting today, it's June 1st. It's Saturday, today. June 1st. Whoa. Uh, one of our newest sponsors and just a guy that I've really grown to love in the few weeks that I've known you, my friend. It feels like a longer time. You said that first, and I like made fun of you. But it feels like we've known each other for a really Quite long sometime. time. We yeah. have the same sense of humor. Which yeah. That's bizarre in itself. But Jack, uh, Zach Johnston, um, the Spice guy, here with us. And I said, well, you know, let's do your live because we're going to do some recording this week, right? Oh, yeah. So you'll hear it running. But uh, right now, talk about the Spice guy and what's happening. Yeah, so uh, basically we do a 1,000 or so restaurants in Colorado and across the country, but mostly here in Colorado. Uh, we do all of our own distribution because one of our distribution partners is taking their time getting their deal together for us. Uh, so we do distribution to... Uh, all the way from the airport to uh, past Summit County. So we'll go to Vail and we'll go all the way to Eagle Vail. Uh, and then we do some stuff for Aspen Ski Area. Uh, so the, the limits are abound for us. We can go anywhere and do anything. We like to say that we have the highest quality spices uh, at the best prices. And Paul actually is a avid user of the Spice Guy. So he can attest to the fact that we do a, we do a pretty good job week in and week out. Well, and customize blends for people. Spice Guy is a place if you need spices here in Denver or all around the country. Look them up, thespiceguy.com. Thespiceguyco.com. Co.com. We're currently suing that guy. The Spice Oh, are you? Nice. <laughs> yeah, we're suing thespiceguy.com currently. <laughs> Good for you. That's yeah. what I like about him. You know, he says what's on his mind. Yeah, know? he's a realist. Uh, you're going to stick around for this segment? Yeah, well, Talk microgreens? Let's talk about it. All right. Uh, let's Micro anything. get back into the show right here from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, the Modern Eater Show. Hi, I'm Charlie Gottenkenny. We all love Belgian beer. Brewmaster at Brews Beers. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> You're listening to the modern You're up. On I Heart Radio. I don't know what's wrong with you, Paul. Anything? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know. You good to go right now? I'm good to go, I think. All right, Paul Dominguez and Sherry Cree. Sherry Cree. Yeah. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yeah, you. Here you are back in the kitchen. First of all, take a, what do you think of the kitchen? It's popping off tonight. an amazing awesome. party. Isn't this insane? It's not yeah. really even a, a party. It's just a show. Were you, you know? surprised to see your, your micros were here before you came? I mean, yeah. I, I found an extra one in the cooler, and I brought it down for these awesome I chefs from Hearth and Dram tonight. Yeah, definitely. They have done some amazing stuff with our greens. Yeah, Is they really have. A micro greens and beer pairings. Oh, I would say uh, you need you need some protein in there, but I'd I'd go with that's just me. Maybe you don't need protein, but yeah. I would like the micro be micro greens protein and a lot of actually I go you know where I go these days, man. Where do I go? As far as what? For what? Whiskey, tequila. Oh, you're a tequila guy now. <laughs> right now, we're we're just on a new tequila diet. That's right. that I'm trying. I wish we made it here in Colorado. We do have our good friend State 38, but let's get back to micro greens, folks, because this stuff is. Off the charts. Yeah, talk about well, Infinite Harvest. 
Yeah, so we are a vertical hydroponic farm, and what that means is that we're growing in rows just like a normal farm, but we actually stack those rows. So within a 5,200 square foot facility, we've got about 30,000 square feet of grow space. We've been there. We toured it the facility. Is so, that place is just so cool. Yeah, it's it, and it's pretty, the purple. I like the purple lights in there. So how are you lighting that? I mean, that's something to it, right? Yeah, so definitely. It's, uh, it's LED lighting, and what we're doing is that leafy greens pretty much only take in red and blue spectrums from the sun, and so we're increasing our energy and efficiency by not having any white light within the facility. So we're only giving the plants those lighting spectrums that they need. Couldn't you just nice. put sunglasses on each one of the plants? To I mean, <laughs> ideally, but that's a lot of sunglasses. <laughs> that's a lot of sunglasses. <laughs> so it's interesting because um, you've got the hydroponics and you have the aquaponics. We have an aquaponics farm that we work with in, in Montrose. But what strikes me about this type of stuff, and, and maybe I'm just too far along on the evolution chain, but I like the pristineness of this type of produce. When we left the aquaponics farm with that butter lettuce, we were eating that like potato chips. Yep. And mm -hmm. I shouldn't be, at, you know, of course there's going to be soil and the, the produce is going to be a little imperfect when it comes out of the soil and the ground. But um, I really like just the pristineness of the micros. Well, what's so cool about microgreens, it's an intense flavor in a little tiny package. Yeah. Most definitely. I mean, and I mean that, you know, the, the cool part about it is that we have 16 different microgreens, and we literally have 16 different flavors that are all very unique, and it's the first about two inches of growth off of any given plant. Um, so, you know, we've got things from sunflower to celery to radish to scallions to amaranth to, you know, wasabi. We've got a lot of cool flavors that just help a chef really paint a picture with yeah. the plate. Pull up some of these, and here's the camera you want to show it to. Yeah, but absolutely. Just show it to the camera, and for the folks listening on the radio, give a description for the folks on Facebook. You can just follow along. So when we're talking about microgreens, like I say, it's about first two inches worth of growth from a plant. They contain higher oil content because it's not spread out between a fully grown plant. So, you know, I mean, the flavors are just... They're so intense, you know. When, when I have something like these sunflower microgreens, these are one of my favorites. It actually tastes like sunflowers. They grow from sunflower seeds. They're Can I give it a shot? Yeah, absolutely, please. I'm going to give it a shot as well. And, and don't you find it, it's not easy oh, wow. doing what you do. I mean, I think there's lots it's of not. imposters out there that are doing this kind of stuff in their basement. And I would be worried about food safety. Well, Not in your place. Yeah, food safety is a big factor. We are GAP audited, which it means that it's called good agricultural practices. And that just says that we are growing in the most food safe method possible. We are yearly audited. So, you know, all of those factors like listeria, E. coli, all of those foodborne illnesses, those are born mostly through soil and water. And we're using no soil within our facility. We grow the microgreens in a corn based mat. And so, right there, we're taking that risk and cutting it in half. And then our water, we actually use a three stage filtration system and then a UV filter or a UV light filter. So what that does is that it kills off, you know, 99% of the pathogens. See, there's another reason a prima donna like me loves to hear that because it eliminates <laughs> some of the concerns in my yeah. mind. Well, and I, and that's a I think factor. there's a segment of people out there that feel the exact same way as I do. Most definitely. Food safety is a huge thing. You know, I mean, you want to be able to make sure that as a chef, you know, when, when you have a restaurant, you're not running that risk of giving someone something that they don't yeah. necessarily I mean, want. Having yeah. like Zach in the field somewhere doing something you don't want him doing. In the yeah, field. I mean, he's trouble. <laughs> well, <laughs> I find it neat, though. A lot of chefs that's are like, trying to get back to back to the right to the farmer. Absolutely. And so sometimes I've run into these chefs that are buying stuff from local neighborhood farmers. And that scares me because the reality is, is do you know when to put on fertilizers? Do you know when not to put on fertilizers? If you're spraying something on your on your crop to keep the bugs away, do you know how long you need to stop spraying it before you give it to somebody? There's all these factors. And I, I just I'm a, I'm a guy who's all about being safety, I deal with a lot of restaurants. You and and a lot of produce comes through your doors, let's face it. That's true. And it's you amazing. start to, to work with the farms. Zach, ask Sherry a question. So, what, so uh, 
What is your role at the company? Let's start there. Great question. What's what? What's your role at the company? Let's start there. I'm a VP of sales and marketing. Okay, and great. I originally got involved from the investment side to oh, the wow. business. Incredible. So ground floor. Helping them. Yes. Incredible. So what did this look like when it started? You have 30,000 feet now. What did it look like at the beginning? Well, beginning, I, I've been only involved lately uh, okay. since December. The beginning, they were broke. Year. Now they're not broke. Yeah, the beginning, they were broke. <laughs> they're, we had about, they're still broke. We had about 10% of the facility built out, and that was kind of our initial proof of concept. And, you know, through that proof of concept, we were able to build out that entire facility because we were able to raise that money to be able to do that. But talk about it, Paul. Being a small business owner is tough. You've got competition from all over. I can name a big company that's knocking on your door every day, and they're national. Yeah. And why, why is it that being a small company is so hard? And what do you guys do to fight off that stuff, Paul? Well, I mean, you know, within our field, education is so much of a factor. You know, not a lot of people know about hydroponic farming, much less vertical hydroponic farming. This is something that, you know, has really taken hold in the U.S. on the East Coast where they need that space. You know, we don't necessarily have a lot of farm space to work with when you're working in an urbanized population. And think about so, drought, too. Exactly. Drought, you know, anything like harsh weather, anything but like, like that. it's like we had a hail this afternoon. Yeah. And, you know, con completely controlled environment, it's... It's You're good to go. We yeah. don't get oh, you affected you didn't by lose weather. Your crop today yeah, we didn't lose our hell. crop. <laughs> right, we Zach. haven't lost our crops with any of the snow. It's great. Zach, ask another question. Well, what I want to know is how, you, how do you get involved in investing into something that's so boutique? Well, we knew the founder, and okay. then a company was going through a transition, and they needed fun funding. That's how we came in, you know, uh, get involved. There's a million places yeah. to put your money, right? There's yeah. a million places, sure. and we'd like some. Greg how is, do you Greg is how pretty do you open. Determine? I think that's a good question. How did how is Infinite Harvest a good fit for you and your money? Well, I think it's a future of agriculture, I, and um, I'm from Japan, and it, you know, in Japan or in Europe, uh, where the space is so limited, um, controlled environment, agriculture is so much more advanced. And in Colorado, we have huge land, but also uh, water is gold. And we only use 95% um, uh, the 5% of the traditional farming compared to traditional farming. So um, the sustainability, and then also you mentioned about the cleanness of the product. Um, there are a lot of chemicals required for transportation of the produce. So if the produce is coming from California to be transported to Colorado, there are a lot of you know, requirements uh, to, to sustain mm -hmm. the, the quality of the produce. Touching so upon it's a the, farm to table. Yeah, touching upon the dense land uh, population, dense population places like Japan and, and many places around the world, that you know, it's kind of our duty to figure out what, what is the future so everybody has the availability of produce. Um, not just the very wealthy, not those Currently. that can give it. Yeah, so uh, that's a cool thing. We're having the summer dinner series coming up. It's in uh, July and August. We'd love to partner with you guys to spread the word, to have more people taste these delicious microgreens, Absolutely. and uh, just keep the drive alive. Just keep kicking the rock down the road. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think that's a great that's idea. That's fantastic. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Paul, Sherry. Thank you. Thanks for coming out Thank tonight. You so Thank you guys. Thank you guys. I work with you guys every week, so yep. <laughs> you know I share the love. <laughs> Who's up next? We're going to be talking beer, I think. Is it beer? Yeah. Yeah, beer. I think it's Mr. Domingo's next. Uh, Jack Johnson just off the microphone. Uh, Dominguez. Paul Dominguez. No, I'm Paul. Oh, no, this is Paul. We just talked to yeah, Paul right there. Harry, you guys are looking for. Uh, yeah, we're looking Harry's. for anything over there. We can't. Uh, <laughs> Harry Smith from Black Sky Brewery, who is uh, going to be in Thirsty Fest, too. But he's got a, uh, a really killer bar. Oh, I'm full, full menu. He brought down some pizza. We're fighting to get some pizza in the oven. These guys at Hearts. Hey, can we hide one of those pizzas? Because me and you like to eat at midnight when nobody's around. Yeah, I, I'm. Well, yeah, we can. <laughs> we can. That's a great idea. Let's, and, and, uh, Jay hid two out in his car already. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> all right, we'll talk beer and then we'll talk whiskey in the I next like two segments as we wind down on this beautiful June 1st in the Mile High City. Brian, such a great show. We're doing. 
uh, we're doing a lot of good work for folks. Spread. Incredible things for small food businesses. Spreading the message. Food and booze, man. Uh, we are all about it. If you're not tuned into our Facebook Live right now, you're missing out because you, truly yeah. you will feel the magic coming from this kitchen. Okay, we'll take a break and we'll come back. Uh, breweries coming up next, and it is Black Sky. Black Sky Breweries coming up next right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Thanks, Greg. We're getting close. We're coming into the... Oh, I, I got a mic, brother. We're getting close. We're with the final approach. We got one last segment. None better. We're, st we're finishing strong. We've got Steve Enderhaus, the head brewer, president of Tommy Knocker Brewery. No stranger. I just saw him yesterday. I was picking up some... I was picking up some uh, spent grain to make another batch of nachos borrachos. Nachos borrachos for our nachos. Uh, you, number one seller at our place. Uh, you guys do a tremendous job. Any new beers that uh, you want to share? Well, our summer seasonal is our Tunderberry. It's a good niche market beer. It's a heavy fruit beer, easy drinking, light beer, and people love it. You know, and it's so fast. You know, driving up there uh, Friday. Uh, yeah, Friday. It was yesterday, Friday. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. I don't sprint. Once I, once I hit, you know, it's, it's there. So get up. Go to Tommy Knocker. Have some food. Have some great beer. Yes, and have some nachos, borrachos. Chips. <laughs> Thanks again, Steve. Yeah. Always a pleasure. This is one of the best in the biz. Speaking of best in the biz, some of our final sponsors want you to take a listen. They've got some great ideas to make you better. We will be back. Rockalitas tortillas. Rockalitas, known for hyper local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you too want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper local, Colorado grown, cold pressed in Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Hey everyone, it's Colleen Ferreira with the Colorado Chefs Association. Are you ready to put your passion to work? Well, we train the future chefs of Colorado, and we want you to join us. The Colorado Chefs Association is recruiting for our fall semester right now. Join our American Culinary Federation accredited cooking program. Work in a professional kitchen and get paid all while earning your sushi chef certification. Email me at colleen at acfcoloradochefs.org. I'd love to hear from you. Join our excitement and explore a new future. Do you have the goods? If you're looking for a neighborhood restaurant that features gluten-free menu items, stop by The Goods. Whether you're a vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, or even a meat lover, they've got something for everyone. Do you love a great sandwich? How about wood oven roasted vegetables on multi-grain bread with rosemary mayo and olives, vegan and certified gluten-free? Or for the meat lover, try one of their most popular menu items, the Paleo Bowl, with house-smoked pork, wood... 30 seconds. Two sunny side up eggs and Indonesian sambal sauce. It's delicious. As a friendly neighborhood restaurant featuring dinner, brunch, and full bar with two happy hours daily, they truly care about you, the customer, and desire to provide an extraordinary dining experience for everyone. They're family and children friendly, and even have a playroom for the little ones. The Goods, a friendly neighborhood restaurant offering a wide menu of gluten free and vegan options. And they don't forget about meat lovers with a staff that really cares. On East Colfax, directly connected to the Tattered Cover Bookstore. Hungry? TheGoodsRestaurant.com. Hey guys, it's Carly. Smith the Fairy Got Mother here. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. I love you. You're, You're listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Let's go make some bone broth. All right, Carly, why not? We're making beer right now, or at least uh, drinking the delicious beer that's already made from Black Sky. Yeah. And Harry Smith, man, what's happening? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Dude. This is cool. This is cool. Yep, Harry I, Smith, I, you I, ready to pour? You've got the you've got the beer, you've got the glass, I'm my friend. I'm ready to pour, I'm ready to drink, are you? <laughs> yeah, I am ready. <laughs> so right. as you pour and we party, let's talk about the brewery, my friend. Let's talk. Hey, it's kind of cool. Steve from Tommy Knockers loving your beer. Thank you. <laughs> That's kind of cool, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, isn't that? Man. So Harry, tell us about the brewery. Beautiful, beautiful. What do we have uh, here, too? This is Demon Seed IPA. Um, one of our best-selling beers. IPA sells really well in Colorado, as you know. So a really good balanced, heavy hopped with a Cascade hop, American uh, IPA. Delicious. The brewery. Tell us about the brewery Real here. Nice. Sorry, I was busy drinking. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> he loves his own beer. Uh, the brewery is a, it's a small brew pub. 
We do about 450 uh, barrels a year. We do pizza, calzone, sandwiches, soup, salads. Everything's made in-house. Um, just Where are you small located? family. We're on Fifth and Santa Fe. So 490, right 490 Santa Fe. So okay. we're about a mile directly to the to the east. So you're by, you're by Intrepid. So we're, we're about a couple blocks from Intrepid. We're a couple yep. of blocks from there. And Renegade Brewery, and and, Renegade. Uh, and we're also by Crazy Mountain. So and Pistol Whip just opened up in the neighborhood That's there. That's right. Yeah, about uh, two blocks from us. Yeah. Do they have you on their taps yet? Not yet, but let's, we're on the radar. Let's yeah. make that happen, right? <laughs> I mean, that's good stuff. So I love learning about new breweries, and I feel ashamed that we haven't been by this brewery. I know, yeah, and I'm he's right around the corner. What's the matter with you guys? Well, it's we need sad. invites a lot of time. We're reclusive. <laughs> well, please come down and see us. That we, oh, there we go. We got there we go. Formal invite. So brew pub. Brew pub, yeah. And yeah. you guys can make food, too, which is great because you don't have to rely on the food truck scene. Well, from the beginning, we knew we, that's that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to make a, a place where we could have pizza and beer um, made of our own because uh, with the brew pub license, we also get liquor, and we're all whiskey fans. So, But wait, Harry, food, beer, and pizza, do those really mix? And metal. <laughs> they mix very well. Right? Nice. Very cool. I mean, pizza and, and liquor mixes with everything, right? It doesn't it? <laughs> so you have the ability to have a full bar as well? Full bar. Oh, that's fantastic. Full bar. We have 23 beers of our own on tap, plus one collaboration beer that we always have on, on uh, Wednesday that we do with four other breweries. Um, we also have two of our own craft sodas on tap, plus um, a full line of liquor and uh, cider. No kombucha, though. No. <laughs> I had a feeling. Hey, uh, that's where we draw the line. It's got to be somewhere, right? That's right. Who would you bring here with you today? Uh, we brought here uh, my lovely wife, Lila, <laughs> and, and one of our best friends, Jesus, who comes to the brewery all the time. Nice. Let, who is it? Jesus. Jesus. Come on over here. Come Jesus. on over, Jesus. <laughs> we haven't oh, had Jesus on the show ever. Trouble. I like tonight. It's June 1st. We've got Jesus right here, one of the regulars at Black Sky Brewery. A regular yes. at the brewery, huh? That's right. Do you live in the neighborhood? Yeah. Oh, oh. well, let's get one, him back here. We've got one, one second. One second here, a little t technical difficulty. And now we got Jesus. Hey, man. Now we go. You live in the neighborhood? Uh, maybe like about two miles away off of the neighborhood. All right, you have a lot of choices around there. Yeah, definitely. Why Black Sky? Uh, great beer, like uh, malty, darker beers for the most part. That's what he likes. Yeah. What's your yeah, favorite? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good switch, like uh, usually porter. Hazelnut porter, it's like a <laughs> seasonal stuff. Did Jesus, you bring any of that porter Jesus with beer. you? No, tonight? but we made it for this guy last year. <laughs> <laughs> Ale of Minerva, usually like the go-to. Well, I mean, I, and I, Harry, I think you, you should make a beer just for Jesus, man. We did. Come on. <laughs> Hazelnut porter, man. Hazelnut porter, yeah. <laughs> what else do you, uh, to become a rich? After Easter, it's gone, though. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, it's flattering to have loyal customers like that, right? Yeah, without a uh, doubt. And, and become good friends. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they do. That's the type of thing. And and truly, when you look at Denver and beyond, but truly, you know, here in Denver and Colorado, a lot of neighborhoods, um, their breweries are so important to the neighborhoods. It really is. And, and I think uh, more and more you're going to see that. I think you're going to see more breweries opening in smaller neighborhoods or restaurants themselves opening their own or having their own brew system. What do you want us to try now? Yes, what's next? I'm, that's what I'm... Ooh, I was going to double up on the demon. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But i got to tell you, you've got a great label. I, I want to hear more about the story behind it as well, Harry. But uh, I'm ready to try another flavor. Let's try another flavor. So this one right here, we're calling it Cali Pucker. Is it a sour? It's not a sour. Traditional, what you think is a sour. <laughs> it's an American uh, extra pale ale that we added calamansi fruit to. And calamansi fruit is like half lemon, half lime. It's supposed to have a oh, grapefruit cheers. notes to it, but I, I, I think it's more like tangerine. Oh, it smells delicious. Wow, isn't that Jesus. great? That is, that's really. This is probably one of the best beers I've had. Really? I mean, yeah. Well, this is a perfect summer beer. You're sweating. This is a beer that you want to drink when it's hot First of outside. First you say I'm standing by a grill? Well, okay, nice sorry. Y yes, we're, we're in, we, Greg <laughs> and I stand, it's really funny where we stand, folks. We're, in we the stand kitchen. on the, in the kitchen. We stand on the 100 degree side of the table here. <laughs> right. Most people don't know this. We, we're we we're baking all night long. This but is a daily. This is, yeah, this is one of those that, oh, yeah, oh my gosh. Without a doubt, yeah. really, really easy drinking. Do you guys have a patio? Can I come down there? Can I make a patio if you don't? We do have a patio. <laughs> we have nice. a fantastic patio with 
giant picnic tables. We got to hang out with each other and, and drink beer. <laughs> and this is what I'd be drinking on their patio all day, every day. It almost tastes like a shanty. Yeah. Ooh. I'm, we're we're going to compare just, it to no, one I mean, of I'm, No, I'm not. Because but it, it wouldn't. Would it, is that a bad thing, though? Is it what? a bad thing if he compares well, it to they, a shanty? You know, not that it, I, you know, I was thinking shanty all the way. Yeah, it's definitely a very light, easy drinking summer beer. Mm-hmm. So think half lemonade, half beer. So can folks come in and get a couple of crowlers to go? Absolutely. Why yeah, not? we have a three. We have a three uh, crowler special. So you can come in and buy three of different kinds, all you want, and uh, and uh, take them to go. Three crowler special. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm getting. <laughs> Three of the same one. I, I mean, mean, I really I like stay that. Stay and drink. And I'll bet you, know, you, you know, as we, we well, should. We, all right, we should probably try one more. And Greg, remember they have food we too. Drink these yet, you guys? So they they do oh, pizza. I, I'm they done. do they do pizza and beer <laughs> the right way. Yeah. Yeah. All right, one more beer and then we got a break. That's a good one. That's mm. a real good one. Yeah. Oh my friend, this she, is a good she one. Wants, Julie, I wants know to Julia. Try that one. She's she's saving people one glass of beer at a time. You, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. There you oh, go. she wanted the the um. Which one did she want? The the one we were just trying. Oh my gosh, Callie the Pucker? Pucker. Yeah. Oh, well, you get the watermelon. Instead. Yeah. I, I'm down to try some watermelon though. Now it looks a little bit darker. This is almost like a red. What do we got going here? All right, this is American ale. It's Imperial American ale, so it's nine percent. We added hibiscus and rose petals to the boil. After the boil, after the fermentation, we, we let it sit in red wine barrels for eight months. You guys are geniuses. After the eight months of fermentation, or sorry, sitting in the, in the red wine barrels, we added the watermelon puree. It's so good. It is so good. Thank you. And, and truly, a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of beer out oh, there, sorry, right? Oh, Jesus. I uh, forgot you again, buddy. Oh, wow. There's a lot of beer out there, Brian, but there's not a lot of great beer. Yeah. That is, like, I'll tell you, all three beers that we've tried tonight... What's your favorite so far, Greg? These, the last two really are at the you. top of my list. Yeah. Uh, this one is incredible. The, the flavors in this are, I mean, all over your mouth. Yep. Definitely it's red good. wine. You can taste the watermelon in the end. Red wine, without a doubt. Uh, as far as floral, the, the rose petals are prominent, you know, and the hibiscus is, is, is there as a Are you, you the know, Yeah. Man, you are a mad genius, my friend. Thank you very much. I mean, truly, we're going to get to know each other because I really enjoy your beer. Thank you. You're doing something great there, Harry. Uh, and Jesus, thank you <laughs> both for coming in. Are you thank enjoying you, yourself? But yeah. This is awesome. Good All time. right, great. See, Ooh, every Saturday aware. night, you can come back anytime. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, take a break. Cool. And uh, we've got someone who came over from the Brewers Guild, Steve Kurowski, and now he's into whiskey. So yeah. we're going to talk to uh, Steve Krawski with his new job, with his new hat on. At coming Law's up next, Whiskey. Law's Whiskey House. That's coming up next right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Choose your path through Cyberland. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook for all the fun photos and videos. Just search The Modern Eater or check out the website, themoderneater.com. Now it's time for the Modern Eater's Booze in the News segment. I like my beer cold, my meat grilled, and my entertainment explosive. All we need is a, is a chair and a, and a cooler beer. Here's your booze news. Oh, you know we got this. It's booze in the news, all the booze news you can use. And we got some booze news for you, man. Brian, uh, this is a cool thing. Uh, one of my favorites back on the show, Steve Kurowski. Welcome back to the market. Hey, thanks a lot. Happy to be here. Good to see you. Switched hats. Yeah, a little bit, huh? Uh, so let's go to the uh, Brewers Guild, your former job. Right. Right. It, it, can I talk beer for just 30 sure. seconds? Sure, yeah. Um, are we starting to see a, a market correction with breweries? Um, you know, it is a crowded marketplace out there. And if you're not making high-quality, world-class product, beer, you're, you're going to need to figure out what your next job is going to be. Um, there's not much shelf space, and all the breweries out there with the tasting rooms, people will know where the best beers are, and if you're not on that list, you're going to have an uphill battle for sure. I agree, and I do think we're seeing a market correction right now with yeah. the closing of some well, it's slowing fairly down. predominant like, breweries. We, we've only had two breweries yeah. open while the show is on tonight. And rem- remember, so. <laughs> they're all small businesses, right? So. Lots of small business run into a lot of different problems. Yeah. What, no yeah. matter some what of them are, so. can't handle growth. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So here you go, and, and I thought, man, he's a mad genius. You gave me a little, last time you were here, you put a little birdie in my ear and said, sit on this for a while. And it was, t- oh, man, 
I did, but here it is now. The new hat is uh, Law's Whiskey House. And Correct. you are marketing director? Correct, yes. Marketing director. I said, Steve's a mad genius, man. He saw this thing with, with breweries, and now he's into spirits. There was no correlation with there that. There wasn't, no, not at all. Um, what, what's happening over at Laws is, is truly special. Um, they are on a, we're on a trajectory to do great things. Was um, it one of these things? I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. Um, a little bit actually, um, but it wasn't like that. The offer was to come be a part of an awesome culture that. and do and Lots whiskey. Yeah, and we're and work with a place that is super passionate about what they do and very unique and genuine in, in their spirits making as well. So, Tell us the why though. Let me jump no, in. Tell us the why, Steve. Why is Laws doing what they're doing? Why? I mean, what's the why behind the magic? Yeah. So, um, Alan Laws. The, you know, the name behind the name, um, he is obsessed with whiskey and has been his entire life. And this was his dream to open this up. And he came with enough capital where he could make all of his whiskey and let it sit for two years, three years actually, before he ever sold a single bottle. Most distilleries aren't in that situation, don't have that luxury of um, sitting on three years worth of inventory before oh, they can sell a single bottle, right? Absolutely. So it's super unique in that aspect. None of our whiskey is sourced. It's all distilled in-house, aged in-house. Um, I'll and bet for it at least three it on years. the bottle, too. Yes. It probably says fermented by as well, doesn't it? <laughs> no. I mean, a lot of that's a trend that's going, because people want to know what kind of quality you're putting into your whiskey. Yes, and all, all the grains for Laws are grown in Colorado. They're heirloom grains yep. planted just for Laws. Yeah. Um, out they? at the Cody Brothers, you know, yeah. uh, out in Alamosa and the Whiskey Sisters in Burlington, yeah. both have fields planted just for our distillery to use very spe specific heirloom grains. Yeah, it's interesting. You talk about Al's passion, and, and I, I don't think this is a secret because he's been on the show before, and he talked about it, just locking himself in a, in a hotel room in New York City, and he had this passion of this business that he wanted. I think he was trading commodities, I, yes. I believe. Yeah, he trading commodities. And he's just like, I don't, this is not me. I mean, it's great for me, and, and, and I got a, a little wallet because of it, but it's true passion. Uh, was making delicious whiskey. Yeah, he figured out what he really wanted to do with his life, and he's doing it. Um, what's happening over there is really awesome. So the growth mm -hmm. that's happening, and you've got a couple of releases that are coming up as well. Can you talk about a couple of those things? Yeah, the, the most exciting thing that's happening this summer is our six-year bonded bourbon is going to be released, which is super unique. Um, Six there's wait, only wait. one. Uh, Let me ask you, what makes yeah. it bonded? A bond, bonding, um, the very simple way of explaining bonded it's a law from the 1800s before prohibition to source and make sure that your whiskey was safe for people to drink um after prohibition it's not a thing but what it is it makes you source and know where all your ingredients are coming from a right so you have to grow you have to use all your ingredients from one harvest year distill at the same harvest year age for at least four years and it has to be at least 100 proof so wow. those three, those four things are very unique. Um, there's only about 30 or 40 distilleries in the country that are doing bonded whiskeys. Well, and that's like almost like a single vintage on a wine. It's something like right? that, yes. I mean, wow, yeah. that's a big deal. People should pay attention to that. Well, and then so, think about six years. Yeah. Yeah, there's been, there's whiskey hanging out in our rack house for six years. We're going to release in, in July of this year. Do you know well, how many barrels you're up to at this point? Just sitting in the stash. In in the rack house, there's about 2,000 barrels That's in there. That's unbelievable. I mean, and you think of these huge distilleries, right? These worldwide distilleries. Uh, yeah. yeah. But for for uh, would you consider it a craft distillery? I would. Yes, we are we are a craft distillery if there's such a term. Uh -huh. um, well, and yes. it's sad. Once I learned about really distilling, I don't look at the big guys anymore as even like a distiller. It's like it's like comparing something like Coca-Cola to Bolines or something like that. It, there's not even, they're not in the same class. It's like here is something that love and care went behind, and here's something that just come and pump it out of a machine. I agree. I mean, what's your take on the staving, though? Because that's something that you guys it's a, differ a little bit. There's some big, big names right now that are staving. Yeah. You guys, they don't. We're, I know they don't, they, and that's they, what I'm curious. Great, great What's book. his take on it? What, what, what do you think about that whole concept? Well, that's not something that um, very traditional whiskey. Right. Yes. And with sourcing the best wood. Correct. And so all of our wood, we, we get 
one barrel, white American oak, new new white American oak for all of our whiskeys. Um, it comes from a premium manufacturer, um, and they, we've been using the same people for a long time. Um, but I can't say exactly um, what Al and the company's philosophy is on the staving thing right now. Right. I know it's a very traditional, yeah. old-school piece. I think, yeah, I think yeah. you're right. I, with a couple of minutes, I want, I want just Steve time to talk about what you want to talk about, and then you, you could say, here's how, we, here's how you drink whiskey. You spend the time however you want to. Sure. Well, we have a whiskey in front of us, okay. right? Yes, so we do. I brought a single barrel, um, bo- a bottle from a single barrel. Now um, you can go to the whiskey church. Truly, you, you can go you to whiskey have church. Pews. Yes. There at uh, Laws Whiskey. Laws Whiskey. Yeah. You start your tour in the whiskey church, and we teach you what's up with the whiskey and Give what's going on. Give us two minutes of it. Yeah. So what's in your hand right now is a uh, American bourbon. Um, it's a four grain. Very unusual. A lot of people don't make a four grain bourbon. Um, they kind of leave the rye out. We, we leave it in. Um, you're going to get a lot of orange peel out of this. You want to start with um, the nose. A lot of, yeah, you start with the nose and yeah, don't don't take a big huff with the with the nostrils or else you're going to burn. I mean, there's 47% alcohol here, right? Oh, well, so open your he, mouth a little bit. This guy taught me how to drink it like a sir. Right. <laughs> and then um, your first drink, I mean, your first little sip is going to be a little warm. So your next sip is really your tasting sip. Yeah, don't be afraid of that um, first sip. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's something you go through. It's, yeah, you got to get your taste buds drunk. Yeah, it's foreplay yes. with whiskey. Correct. And, and, and so when you're done with that, then it's a little different experience. Right. right? And so the minute, about a minute later, you're going to be able to actually taste what, what you want, what you're looking for. And this is what I'm getting out of this one is a lot of vanilla. Yep. Wow. This, one, this single barrel is very yep. vanilla heavy to me. Um, and black tea. Getting a lot of that out of this one. Black tea? I didn't call that one out, oh, folks. Wow. Did, you, did you get that black tea? Yeah, and, and Lost Whiskey House. It's very, to me, it's very rich. It, it tastes the way you would want a flavor of whiskey to be, um, truly. And you it can, really does. You can taste really, the aging. But here's it. what I would say. Like this is what I asked our question earlier. Why would you mix this with anything? Yeah, we were talking about Why? That. I'm, I'm a purist. I would only want to drink this. Maybe. I'm. And It'd here's where you and I Manhattan. disser. I don't know. I, I would say put a piece of ice in it, but you don't like that. I'm a I'm a rock guy. He's a non-rock guy. I would say I would say for this bourbon, it's very good neat or just on the rocks. I agree with that. It doesn't really need much, but we have a we have a whis- we have a wheat whiskey that is a wonderful summer cocktail. When you just add a, you just make a highball out of it, like that wheat whiskey and some soda water and a little bit of lemon. It's like an amazing summer slammer um, okay. to use. Here's Frank. But yes, this bourbon is very good, just neat like it is. We're Steve wrapping, Kurowski, wrapping down, down the time. night. Yeah, so we'll, I'll be back. I hope. I hope I'll be back. Thank you, man. Thank you, Thank you so you. much. Great to all night. of our, our listeners. We'll be Thank back. You. Get ready for road trip and summer dinner series. Stay tuned for that. We'll see you next week on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio.